Aloha! Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Jay Dreamers, and welcome to Truth in Movies. Are you ready? Let's do this. All right. So, I feel like it's only fitting to put on the sunglasses while we break this particular flick down. It's called John Carpenter's They Live. Now, I break down movies every once in a while, just share my commentary with everyone, um, and let you know what I think about it esoterically, what the symbolism behind all the things and the scenes and the names and the etymology and all kinds of things during the movie. So basically, that's what we're going to do. So grab your popcorn, have something to drink, and uh, feel free to hang out in the chat. There's a lot of good vibes and good people in there. And uh, I look forward to reading over the chat the next day when I go over this video to see what everyone else has said. So with that being said, let's begin. Uh, this is one of the most, if not the most requested movie um, that people have asked for me to break down called They Live. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis of the movie. Essentially, it's about aliens that live among us and have lived among us for who knows how long, but they look just like us. And one guy stumbles upon a secret, uh, some special eyewear that allows him to see who they really are. So let's check this out. The main character is Roddy Roddy Piper, Rowdy Roddy Piper from the WWF when I was a kid. <laughs> All right, so check this out. The opening scene, it's got some, uh, some. well, first it says they live and then the they live um, title turns into some graffiti that's on the wall. The writing that's on the wall. This is really interesting. If you notice, there's a little spiral going on over here. And it almost looks like there's buildings getting like sucked up into the sky around that spiral. Pretty interesting. There's also a little syringe going on. And a guy who looks like he's drawing all over everything, right? Why is this interesting to me? Because of the graffiti uh, connection to this particular artist. His name is uh, Shepard Fairy. Is that what it is? Let me zoom in a bit. Shepherd Fairey. Anyway, he's the one that came up with this whole concept of the obey stickers, right? Usually it had uh, Andre the Giant's face, another WWF wrestler, and it says obey on it. And it was just, it became a part of our pop culture all over the place. And it was a sticker that people put up all over the place, sort of as a sign of rebellion. Interestingly enough, he's also the exact same artist that was hired to make this poster. I kid you not. <laughs> Same exact guy who on his own did this whole um, poster imagery that is a sign of, of rebellion, basically saying like, um, hey, this is these are the people who, this is Big Brother, okay? This might as well be a Big Brother poster, you know? So then he was hired by the government, by the government, to create this as a sticker, as a poster to put everywhere. And it worked. Boy, did it work. Now, that's what this movie's about. This movie's about consumerism. It's about mind control. It's about uh, perception filters. And we're going to talk about all of that. So, as the movie begins, they move away from the graffiti, and then you see a train off to the side, right? Now, this train over here says shock control. Interesting, because uh, train after train passes and it says shock control, shock control. So that reminded me of um, a document that I have come across and read several times. I'll probably break it down here on my channel uh, soon enough. It's called Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. They actually talk about shock control in this document. This document was allegedly found in... Um, what was it, like a printer or something like that? It was found in a printer, just kind of left there on accident. Somebody found it, and it's essentially instructions for those in charge of the world how to stay in charge, how to take control, how to make it easy for themselves as, as if it was ingredients for baking a cake. So let's check this out. I'm going to zoom on, on this one a little bit here. Application in economics. Hold on, let me make it bigger so I can read it. All right, so this part's about shock control. To use this method of airframe shock testing in economic engineering, so basically they took something that has to do with um, mechanics and airframes and aviation and stuff like that. Uh, they took that and they said to use this method 
In economic engineering, that means manipulating our money, our economics, or the economic flow of currency, which is electricity or energy, right? The prices of commodities are shocked. That means the stuff that you buy, that we buy all of the time as consumers is shocked. What does that mean? Uh, it says the public consumer reaction is monitored after the prices are shocked. The resulting echoes of the economic shock are interpreted theoretically by computers and the psychoeconomic structure of the economy is thus discovered. Let me explain that in layman's terms, okay? What they do is they take the price of coffee or they take the price of gas or whatever it may be. They jack it up out of nowhere, you know, seemingly for no good reason. And then they monitor all of the reactions through supercomputers and algorithms. And they figure out how things are changing based on that one shock of that one price. And then they adjust their algorithm a little bit. They put the price back close to where it was, and they're able to make predictions on your life, on your spending, on your routes that you take to and fro in your daily life, etc. So let's read on. It says here, I'm just going to read this part. Um, it is by this process that partial differential and difference matrices are discovered that define the family household and make possible its evaluation as an economic industry dissipative consumer structure. Then the response of the household to future shocks can be predicted and manipulated and society becomes a well-regulated animal with its reins under the control of a sophisticated computer regulated social energy bookkeeping system. Interesting. Let me read this last part here. If I can, it's kind of small on my side. Eventually every individual element of the structure comes under computer control through a knowledge of personal preferences. Such knowledge guaranteed by a computer association of consumer preferences, universal product code, UPC, etc. All right. So basically, what does that mean? That means that they monitor what you buy. Why? Because it's a part of all kinds of super advanced algorithms so that they can determine how you move, how you act, the currency, which is the, your energy and your flow of your life, of your energy that you put into things, what you buy, what you sell, um, is representative of your very own energy and collectively our energy. So if they understand where that currency or that current is flowing, they can manipulate the flow. They can manipulate and direct traffic of humanity, essentially. All right. So that was interesting for me. The shock control uh, right there in front of your face time and time again, train after train. Then we've got Rowdy Roddy Piper. He has no name. He has no name in this movie. He's actually uh, listed as his name is Nada. Nada, which in Spanish means nothing. Essentially, he's nobody. He's he's not anyone specific. He's you. He's me. He's your every everyday average person. Or is he? Let's check it out. All right, so he's walking around. I found this to be really interesting as well. It starts to rain at the very beginning of the movie, storm symbolism. Um, all the homeless people and, and everyone else, they're putting up umbrellas. They're trying to put in boxes, cardboard boxes over their head. They want to get out of the rain. Well, why? Why is it that we're kind of conditioned to freak out over water droplets falling on top of us? <laughs> it's not like it's flooding or anything like that. It's just water. As a matter of fact, it's not just water. It's pure water. This is water coming directly from the sky. I relish in it personally. I love it whenever it rains and I'll walk around with my head held high, smiling a big smile while everyone else cowers and, you know, pretends like it's acid or lava or something falling from the sky. Now this is based upon the short story called eight o'clock in the morning by a guy named Ray Nelson. Basically, it's a comic book. And here is the comic book. As you can see, Nada is right there. Over here, if we zoom in, you can see how it says like work eight hours, play eight hours, sleep eight hours. This guy in the comic book um, was able to get zonked out of it. He had like some, some sort of treatment. I don't know what happened. I didn't read the whole comic book. Uh, but this guy fell out of um, the trance that he was in. And then he realized the entire world is in a trance. So he calls up, um, well, first he starts looking on the television and stuff. He calls up his, his, uh, the police chief, as you can see right here, the police chief 
And see, there's him watching the news on TV, and he's really just seeing aliens everywhere. There's these tentacle, weird, uh, plasma-looking alien weird things. They look like chewed up gum or something. And uh, the the police chief is like, "What? What? You, oh my God! Come come to my office right away!" So he goes to his office, and the police chief, what does he say right here? He says, uh, "Hey, you're you're George Nada," and he's like, "That's right, Frankenstein." Lays into him, starts killing all the aliens and stuff. So yeah, it's based off of a comic book originally, a short story. Now George Nada goes home and he's like, man, if I could tell anyone about this, I could tell my fiance. And he walks in there. He's like, I need you to wake up. You got to wake up. And she has no idea what he's talking about. She's starting to think he's a little crazy. Just kind of like in the movie They Live, uh, whenever whenever Rowdy Roddy Piper's character meets Frank, his, his little work buddy or whatnot. All right, now this says screenplay, screenplay by Frank Armitage. Now check this out. This is not even true, okay? This screenplay is not by anyone named Frank Armitage, okay? Armitage is the last name of one of the characters that John Carpenter used as a pseudonym to go by, uh, one of the characters in an H.P. Lovecraft book called The Dunwich Horror. Now if you're unfamiliar with Lovecraft... He was into these cosmic horrors of these beings that lived outside and beyond our sky who were huge and and planet-sized and usually had lots of tentacles and things like that. I talk about them all the time. Cthulhu being uh, the, the major player that most people are familiar with. But it was directed by John Carpenter. And so this guy's homeless, basically. Rowdy Roddy Piper's character is homeless. He's just walking around. He has no home. Uh, to go to. He lives on the street. Goes through some sort of a food stamp office type government office place. And it says job opportunities. Ooh, check that out. What an opportunity. I wanted to point this out because they always make it sound like getting a job or being a slave, which is exactly what that is. Okay. Whatever job you have, if it's a cushy job, if it's a crappy job, it doesn't matter. It, you're a, it's a slave job. You're a slave. You're working for someone else. You're not working for yourself. And guess what? They don't teach us that, right? It's not like they encourage that in the public school system. Like, hey, everyone, here's how to go into business for yourself whenever you get out of here. No, they don't. They want you They want you to learn how to write in cursive so you can sign away all of your power and whatnot. But I'm not going to get into that too much right now. Down here at the bottom, it's interesting. It says the food stamp program has been suspended until further noticed. So they're not giving food away to the people as well. These are the types of programs that people gave up our, we gave up our power. At the very least here in America, towards the early like 20s, I would say, uh, where they started coming up with all these programs and benefits. And they're like, here, here, we'll, we'll offer you this if you just give us power. If you just relinquish your control over your life and let us control your life or govern your life. We'll give you little tickets that you can use to buy food. Isn't that wonderful? And instead of your gold and your silver and whatnot, we'll give you little tickets that you can exchange for things, little pieces of paper, which we'll see here in a bit as well. All right. So this lady, he's trying to, he's trying to find a job because that's all he knows. He's a regular Joe. He doesn't understand to go into business for himself. He doesn't understand uh, the value that he has in and within himself that he could offer to others to uh, provide for himself, essentially. So she's like, where's the last place that you worked? He's like, Denver, Colorado. Interesting. I mean, for me, because that's where I, that's where I'm from. Well, I mean, I'm not Denver. I'm in Colorado Springs. But interesting because Colorado comes up quite a bit and... There's a lot of speculation and rumors about underground facilities out here in Colorado. In many books and movies, Colorado becomes the center of the new world after some sort of a cosmic or uh, worldwide apocalyptic scenario. And there's a lot to that. There's the Denver International Airport, which I've been to quite a few times, etc. All right. So uh, this guy starts walking. I don't know what to call him. Nada. <laughs> Nada starts walking. And uh, he's listening to this preacher. The preacher gets on and he's like, they use their tongues to deceive. The venom of snakes is under their lips. And in their paths is nothing but ruin and misery. And at first you just think, eh, whatever. It's just some crazy preacher guy, you know, standing up on his soapbox or whatever. He goes on. They've taken the hearts and the minds of our leaders. Ah, now here's the thing. They're not all aliens. 
They don't all have to be aliens. Just because they're in charge, just because they're in power, doesn't mean that they have to be the ones. There's something called the hidden hand. They're hidden because they're not in the public sight. They're not names or people that you even know about, if they're people at all. In the background, you can see the coffee shop there. I find it interesting that they chose specifically to put that in the background. There was a movie that we broke down um, a few months ago called Free Guy. And in Free Guy, which was total knockoff of this movie, um, which not bad. It was it was okay. This one's a million times better. But uh, in Free Guy, the coffee shop was a central part of everything. They insisted everyone have your coffee, drink your coffee. Why? Because it's false energy. It's fake energy. It's a drug, essentially. And you get it so that you can... Because everyone's tired. Everyone's sleepy. Everyone's drowsy. Everyone's out of it. They need energy. We're running out of energy. We're lacking energy. So they put coffee shops on every other corner and in between. So the preacher goes on, Because outside the limit of our sight... Our owners, they have us, they control us. And then all of a sudden, right on cue, whoop, 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 cops show up, right? Here comes the cops. What? Why? Why would the cops care about this guy, right? There's homeless people all over the place. There's all kinds of crazy things going on. Some preacher guys out there talking about how those who are in charge of the policies that they create, which is where the word police comes from, in case you were wondering, the policy enforcers are what the police are, the policia, policies. Uh, they're the policy enforcers. They're not the law enforcers. They're not, not, not that I'm a fan of that either, but they're the policy enforcers for policies. It's a policy for business. That's what businesses have. They don't have laws. They have policies because ultimately this guy right here, wherever he may be, He's inside of a huge corporation, a business, and they have policies that they enforce through these guys. They are our masters, goes, he goes on. So then this guy starts to walk. They zoom in on these televisions, right? They all say Cable 54. They're showing you these televisions for a reason, right? They put, the, they put TVs in this movie in your face every other scene, essentially, so that you can pick up on what they're trying to put down. Cable 54, 5 and 4 adds up to 9. 9 is a spiral. It's hypnotism. It's a spiral. It goes around and around and around and around, uh, essentially. All right, so he sees the televisions. Now you cut. This is a real quick scene. This is Some of this stuff is real subtle. You see this guy right here. Who is this guy? He didn't need to be in this scene. He's actually blocking the main character's view right now. They purposefully put him right there. And they purposefully told him, stare at these televisions. This guy's just watching commercials. I don't know if you've seen this movie, but right before this little Cable 54 ad thing was on there, it was just a commercial. That's all. So this guy's stuck in a trance, staring at commercials left and right, which is the world that we live in, right? Uh, unfortunately, back then, you couldn't just press a button and skip the commercial. You had to watch it or you had to turn it. And every time the commercial's like, hey! super loud, like way louder than the actual thing that you were watching. And they know that because they know people will turn down the volume when the commercial comes on, right? Now look at Rowdy Roddy Piper. Boom. Eyes straight, focused on the path ahead, not distracted, looking over at, hey, look over here. Hey, look over here. You guys ever see Minority Report? Ooh, that's a good one too with Tom Cruise. Uh, I'm not a huge Tom Cruise fan, I guess, but he has some, some pretty cool movies. In Minority Report, they literally read, like these computers and stuff, these advertisements, read your retina of your eyeball, which is unique, has like a unique signature, just like your fingerprints. And they give you personalized ads all over the place, calling you out by name, trying to distract you, etc. But uh, this guy, Nada, he's just looking straight ahead and he's focused on his path, which is what I try to do too. Now... He's sitting outside, he's homeless, he's by a little uh, dumpster fire or whatever, garbage fire or whatever, and you can hear this blasting television from like across the street. So he looks over and he sees this lady on TV and she's like, all I ever have to do is be famous. People watch me and they love me and I never ever grow old. Why is she saying this? Why is this even important? Why is this being shared? This is a script. This is part of the movie. This is something important that they're sharing with us. This is this is not a real television show that they just happen to, you know, catch 
for the movie's sake or whatever. This is a part of the script. This is just, this is some lady who finds her value in distracting other people, essentially. That's, I mean, that's, that's what I get from it. She's also the lady in the red dress for you Matrix fans out there. And I never grow old. Well, she also represents those beings who we will see here in just a bit, but those alien beings who come down into our world from time to time that are immortal, that in comparison to our minuscule little 80 years or whatever we have here in this world currently, because I think that's going to change, um, they live for, for a very long time. And then, they're, and then when they don't, they try to figure out ways to prolong that lifespan, right? Usually blood sucking and feeding off of the uh, energy of us, the regular people, the cattle, the sheep, whatever you'd like to call them. All right. So this guy, Rowdy Rowdy Piper, finally gets his job, right? Hey, I need a job. I need a job. I need to work. I need to slave away. He literally becomes a mason, a builder, a house builder. He's Bob the Builder, we could say. Um, and then, then his boss walks up to him and says, hey, there's no sleeping on this site. So you park your ass somewhere else tonight. Ooh, you rhymed. Anyway, um, that's interesting too, right? This whole thing about like people can't sleep on the street or they, they insist that we live within this, the, the boundaries and the confines of their cities that they have us build for them, right? And then they're like, you can't stay here. Well, where can I stay? Where can I sleep? Where may I rest from all the work I've just done for you, right? Oh, I don't, well, you're going to have to get a job so that you can go get a hotel room or whatever. Whatever happened to just laying down on the ground, looking up at the stars and closing your eyes? Well, that's illegal. That's against the policy. You can't sleep in the store. You can't sleep in the business. But they don't, they, they trick us into making us think that there is no business, that there is no store, but there is. And we supply its, its uh, power. So Rowdy Roddy Piper goes to this little homeless shelter area where all these you know, little homeless camp type deal. People have, you know, uh, made their own little bathrooms and stuff. And at first you might think, oh, man, this poor guy, this is terrible, etc. This is the way that it should be. In my personal opinion, I feel like this is a better way of life. Maybe not in the world as it is today. I don't know. You know, maybe you're comfortable with your luxuries and stuff. I like my luxuries that I have sitting here talking to you on YouTube. I wouldn't be able to do that if I lived in this area right here. But the time may come and the time has come many times in our past where this, these tent cities are all people will have. People will have to rely upon Mother Earth uh, the way that we once did. People will form communities and be forced to make friends and to get to know their neighbors and to talk with one another and actually develop uh, relationships. See, he's all happy. This lady offers him some extra peas and stuff. Everyone's coming together. They're not oppressed. They're living off of the land as best as they can, at least. So he meets this guy, Frank, who becomes his sort of best friend in the movie. Uh, right now, Frank both of them, right now, both of them have no glasses, okay? Right now, both of them are, they're just, they're just blind, essentially, okay? For the sake of the movie, they're blind. They don't know anything to the deeper truths of life. This guy has something going for him. The main character, he believes in the greater good. He has hope. He has a lot of great qualities um, that will get him and somewhere and, and will actually end up saving him in the movie. This guy over here is like, keep your head down, mind your business, you know, whatever. He says this whole deal is like some kind of crazy game. He's talking about life. They put you at the starting line, and the name of the game is Make It Through Life. Only everyone's out for themselves and looking to do you in at the same time. Hey, Big Drink Tea, welcome to my channel. Just join the Good Vibe Tribe, welcome. So, this guy makes a solid point over here, right? He's like, it's just a game. It's, it's, it's rigged. It's not fair. They say, hey, welcome to life. You know, everyone has a fair shot. By the way, here's all your weapons to kill each other. It's like the Hunger Games, essentially. It's the same exact concept. So this guy looks up. Look at him. Look how peaceful he looks, right? I love the smile on this dude. He says, I believe in America. I follow the rules. Now, you might have the best of the hearts of the whole world, but the Look at the reality, right? The reality is, look where he is. Can you be happy where you are? Yes, you can. 
Life is whatever we make of it, right? No matter where we are. Our experience in life is a heart condition, right? It's all about our, our attitude. It's all about how we perceive or choose to perceive things, right? How we deal with the cards that we have. You can keep playing and try to get better cards, but you got to do something with those cards that you're dealt. So this guy's like, I believe in America. Now, when he says America, he's talking about a corporation. He doesn't even know it yet, though. He's talking about a business. He's like, I follow the rules. He follows the policies of the business, right? So then we go over to like this corner of the homeless area and they have a television. I don't know how they got power to this television <laughs> out in the dirt, but they're, they're constantly showing you just like these ads. Look at this lady's fingertips. Do you see how long these fingers are? I just wanted to point that out. It is a nail commercial. So, I mean, that's creepy. Those are extra, extra, super long nails or fingers or whatever it is. And look how happy she is. She's just jogging away with her long nails or whatever. This is ridiculous. They show us this ridiculous stuff. You know what's crazy? Some people have watched They Live and probably were like, oh, wow, what's that? Oh, she looks really happy. I wonder what kind of, I wonder if that's a real commercial. I wonder where I can get those. We've been so indoctrinated and programmed as consumers to consume, to buy. Oh my goodness. But then what happens when it, when it, when it goes away? Hey, what happened? I was, I was watching that. What's going on? Um, that was my programming. It was programming me. Now I'm not programmed. Now what do I do? Alas, and woe is me. Now this guy gets on, right? our impulses are being redirected. Oh, it's a truther. Okay, sweet. All right, sweet. Like some people like me would be like, whoa, this is insane. Record, record, check this out. What's going on? It's something different. I like different. So listen to what this guy says. Our impulses, the things that you are inclined to do, right, are being redirected. We are living in an artificially induced state of consciousness that resembles sleep. Now, let's go back to these two guys. These are a couple of the homeless guys that live in, in the area. This dude right here, remember his face. He's going to make an appearance later on, okay? This guy is just a... He, all he does is he complains. Every time this truther guy gets on the television and interrupts his freaking press-on nail commercials or whatever, he's like, oh, man, not this again, blah, 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 right? So, let's listen to the truther and see what he has to say. We're living in an artificially induced state of consciousness that resembles sleep. This is true, okay? As far as our, our brain patterns and our brain waves go, um, we are docile. We have become docile in thought, in our energy. We no longer can really think critically. We just bump into walls. We go from uh, one place to another and we do what we have been programmed by the programs to do. Instead of uh, the programs encouraging independent thought, independent research, true living, happiness, whole health, and whole hearts, they don't. They don't. They do just the opposite. So listen to this guy right here. Oh, this goddamn hacker. That's the second time tonight his ass is cut in. That's exactly how he sounds, <laughs> right? This hacker. Oh, man, he's interrupting my my jogging nail commercials. Oh man. Oh, what the hell? Right. That's pretty much exactly how he, how he comes across. He doesn't like it. He becomes irritated. The people who are sleeping, the sleepwalkers of this world become frustrated as all hell and very irritated whenever a wrench is thrown into the system. They don't like it and they don't know why they don't like it. They just know they don't. And they become frustrated and aggravated and upset. So this guy on the TV continues. He says the movement was begun eight months ago. Their intention to rule rests with the annihilation of consciousness. Consciousness. Con means with. Science means knowledge. Conscience. Consciousness. To have knowledge. How much knowledge do we really have about ourselves, about our world around us, about the things that we watch, even movies like this? Do we have any knowledge or are we just simply a amused a without and muse thought amuse they have a whole park you can go to to be thoughtless it's called an amusement park the annihilation of consciousness we have to be lulled into a trance he goes on to say now rowdy rowdy piper remember he wasn't he was he, he was looking straight on earlier didn't see the commercials didn't see any of that stuff but boom he's watching this guy he tunes in he's like whoa 
What's he talking about? This is interesting. We've been lulled into a trance. Okay, I hear you. Please understand. They are safe as long as they are not discovered. They're safe as long as they're not discovered. So, to be discovered means that they are currently covered. They are currently concealed. There is a hidden hand at work, okay? If you pick up what I'm throwing down, they keep us asleep. They keep us selfish. They keep us sedated. I mean, this is something that hits home to me. I don't know how a lot of you feel about it, but this is personal, man. I felt this. I felt this. How he, how, how he was talking earlier about they, they manipulate our impulses, right? Um, I've struggled with that. I mean, I did a whole video the other day about it, how I like, you know, I, I caught myself being rude and selfish and angry and frustrated. And I'm like, ah, no, 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 no. We snap out of it. We, there's something going on. There's something not right here. That's not good. That's not the way, you know, they keep us sedated. They do. They keep us literally sedated in, in that mental brainwave, uh, pattern, I can't remember which, which ones it is. You can help me out in the chat if you'd like to. It's either the theta waves. I can't remember, but it's it's it, it literally changes our our waves of our thought process uh, that take us away from critical thought and more into like just being um, a zombie, a walking dead, uh, a sleepwalker, somebody who who like like back in the day when they um, they used to take like a little pointy thing and then hit it into like someone's eye to to mess up your brain and just have you uh sedated all the time i forgot what that was called but anyways people used to really do that and then it was an acceptable um scientific method and um a way of of um it's what the doctors used to do and people just whatever took it for what it was worth anyway one sec got my cranberry juice I slay reptilian hybrids just subscribed. Well, welcome. We've got one that can see. Now go back to this guy right here. He's the naysayer. They're pulling the water out of the sand like sponges. He goes, blow it out your ass. Oh, well, that's an intellectual way of thinking. That's a critical thought. Blow it out of your ass. Ex excellent. This is, this is the response that we are taught. This is the this is the way that the system responds when there's a wrench thrown into it, when something doesn't go the way that the programming says that it should go, right? Frustration, anger, just uh just filthy words spewing out of people's mouths. That's all that they know how to do. They don't understand how to articulate themselves. So they they turn to something simple like cursing. Rowdy Roddy Piper's still tuned in. He's watching the program. But then he notices off to the side, there's this white church with green stained glass windows. And there's a couple of guys over here conspiring. One of them is the preacher that was preaching earlier who got like arrested by the cops or whatever. And I look at this and I'm like, that's an interesting thing. A white church with green windows. What could that possibly represent? We've seen this before. In this movie, when we broke down in the tall grass, right? White church, green windows, totally green on the inside. And we talked about that color green and what that represents. It represents the heart chakra. It also represents physically in location in our world, uh, in proximity to the North Pole, the center of our world, the heart of our world. So they go back to the television and these guys are watching something weird. It's only on there for like two seconds, right? There's some sort of a house or farm and then there's these weird pillar things and then the pillar things start to crash down on top of the farm and then they go back to these guys and I'm like, whoa, whoa, what was that? Oh my God, what was that? I have to know. I've got to figure this out. Why they chose, they're not just showing random things on the television. They're specifically showing things that are related to the topic of the movie, to the theme, to the content that they're sharing with you, to the message that they're giving to you. This right here is a message. Naomi. Hey, welcome, Naomi. That's interesting, Naomi. Hmm. All right. So I looked it up. I, I mean, I, I, I remembered this movie. I've seen this movie somewhere before. So I searched for about 20 minutes until I found it. It's called The Monolith Monsters. This is an old movie, really weird one. 
um, where these monolith crystal things grow up out of the ground and then they crash down onto towns and kill people and stuff. However, there's also this interesting side effect that they suddenly can turn people into stone. These monolith monsters can petrify human beings. Human petrification is being shown to you through this movie as a little breadcrumb. Now, is it possible that humans can become petrified physically, actually turning into rock? Or is that just a concept that we just associate with the word petrify because, oh, I'm so scared, I just freeze up? No. No, 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 no. Human petrification, as a matter of fact, petrification of almost any substance, according to my research so far, uh, is very possible, very likely uh, to have happened in the past and will possibly happen again in the future. There's an account of it in the Bible where Sodom and Gomorrah were being destroyed. Lot's wife looks back to watch the show because of the pretty lights or whatever, and she's petrified. She doesn't just get so scared that she can't move and freezes up like a deer in headlights. No, she turns into rock. The fragments, it says here in uh, the monolith monsters, the fragments also begin to slowly petrify some of the inhabitants of nearby small towns. How is that relevant? Well, I believe that it's the plasma that happens during this apocalyptic scenario uh, that can petrify. Something can, electricity has the potential, especially if it's powerful enough, to actually turn things into rock. There have been trees that have fallen onto power lines that have been instantly petrified. Look at the, the, um, the petrified forest. I had to look at my little, I have a little, uh, poster of the petrified forest as a little souvenir when I went. Um, and I did a video about this too, as well. Um, but there's whole entire forests of living organic beings you call trees that have been turned instantly into rock. So it's not like it's up for debate. It's a fact of life. Petrification, instant petrification of organic life is a fact. Anyways, let's get past that. This guy goes on TV. He's like, we are their cattle. We are being bred for slavery. And then, then this guy over here, he goes, not again. Ah, oh, man. He goes, uh, the truther guy on TV goes, we cannot break their signal. Our transmitter is not powerful enough. And it starts to get interrupted. The signal must be shut off at the source. Hangtown Hutch just subscribed. Welcome. Now, this girl and, and her dad are watching and they're, they start to get these headaches. Every single time this, this, this signal pops in and interrupts their programming. They're like, daddy, I have a headache. Me too, honey. Me too. Right. Not trying to, they, they don't connect the dots, right? That the headache is coming from the television. The headache is coming from the fact that they have been used to certain brave, uh, brain waves, certain ways of thought, certain thought patterns, right? And then those patterns are changing, which is actually causing them headache in their brain because their, their thoughts are being rewired unbeknownst to them. So this guy over here, he looks across the street at that church and he's like, Hmm, this is interesting. Something's going on over there, right? So he makes his way over here to the white church with the green windows, AKA, in my opinion, the North pole, right? If this is all symbolic of our entire world on a small scale, he would be going to the North pole right now. All right, so he goes over there and he stands there just trying to fit in and pretend like he's not up to anything, right? But look at the lyrics to the songs that they're singing. It's church songs, but look at the lyrics that they chose to put into this movie. That's not a church movie. This is not a Christian movie or, you know, supported by the Catholic church or anything like that, right? They say rock of ages, the rock of ages. What rock of ages? Cleft for me. Cleft means open up. So they're talking, they're singing, they're worshiping to some rock, okay? Some people would say, well, it's our God or whatever. Okay, hey, that's fine. But it literally says rock of ages, meaning rock eternal, a rock that has always been there. Cleft for me, open up for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Hide from what, I wonder? Hmm, interesting. Well, I could tell you Mount Maru traditionally is located at the North Pole, and we've talked about it before that there have been many different tribes of people that have made pilgrimages. Welcome, Gregory. Pilgrimages to the North Pole, to Mount Maru, 
to what I call the plasma volcano to hide themselves within it while this apocalyptic, you know, uh, stuff happens on the surface of the world. So this guy looks around, he sees all this chemical stuff. He's like, whoa, okay, I knew something was going on in this church. Then he sees these lenses. Interesting. Pardon me. So he sees these lenses, right? And uh, he's like, wow, they're doing something with chemicals and lenses in this place. So he looks around, he checks it out. On the wall, it says, they live, we sleep. And then in the background, they're singing, Oh, he's my wheel. He's my wheel in the middle of a wheel. I don't know. I don't know the tune at all. But he, God, okay, is a wheel in the sky. Okay, that's not said in the movie, but it's the wheel in the sky. Like the Journey song, wheel in the sky keeps on turning. That's what this is about. Whenever the world depressurizes and that hole opens up in the sky, and our pressurized atmosphere is depressurized, you see two holes. Actually, I've done a video about this. Um, it's on my uh, Plasma Apocalypse playlist and my short video playlist as well. Um, and it's about the all-seeing eye, the truth about the all-seeing eye and the pyramid. Okay, The pyramid is Mount Meru. The all-seeing eye is the hole that opens up above Mount Meru at the North Pole. But there's two circles up there, wheel within a wheel. Interesting. So then these guys are back there and they're they're scheming and they're like robbing banks. What are we going to do? Keep robbing banks, manufacturing Hoffman lenses till we're blue in the face? Now, what they're talking about is they, they're the ones who are making these special sunglasses that have special chemicals in them that allow people to see real life a bit differently. And they can actually see the reality behind the facade. And that's what they're doing. They're trying to wake people up. However, this guy over here is he's sort of helping to be the leader of things and he's getting frustrated, right? Because why? Because the police are after them, because the government is looking for them, because uh, they're being deemed terrorists and anti, you know, America or whatever it is, right? So they're like, what are we going to do? Now, I would like to point this out. They're literally bank robbers, right? They don't care about any of, of the structure of the system because once you put on these bad boys whoosh, and you can see with brand new sight and a new vision and new eyes, the things that you used to think were important no longer are. And the things that you used to think were unimportant become crucial and integral to life and living. So they're literally bank robbers. And they say manufacturing Hoffman lenses. This is interesting. I did not know until I reviewed the movie again uh, for like the 12th time that they were called, that they had a name, that these glasses have, they, the glasses have a name where the main character doesn't. That should tell you something about how important it is. What is Hoffman lenses? What are Hoffman lenses? Well, they're named after this guy. Uh, I can't really see him right there. Let me make it smaller. Can you see him? There we go. Albert Hoffman. Who is Albert Hoffman? Well, let me read it to you. Uh, Albert Hoffman was a Swiss chemist known best for being the first person to synthesize, ingest, and learn of the psychedelic effects of lysergic acid, uh, basically LSD, right? So this dude right here, won all kinds of prizes and stuff. He's famous. He's rich and everything. Or he was. I don't know if he's alive or whatever. No, I guess he's not alive. Um, but yeah, he invented LSD. Yeah, that scary drug that was shunned so much back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and early 90s. But now all of a sudden it's coming back into light. Why? Well, because we have all kinds of mental diseases these days, all kinds of messed up mental problems. And it turns out that there's used to be universities and stuff that studied the effects of LSD and other currently illegal drugs. So let's check this out. Uh, so this, this guy right here created LSD. It says Hoffman was also the first person to isolate, synthesize, and name the principal psychedelic mushroom compounds, psilocybin, and uh, psilocin. He authored more than 100 scientific articles and numerous books, including LSD, Mein Sorgenkind, or My Problem Child. In 2007, he shared first place with Tim Berners-Lee in a list of 100 greatest living geniuses. 
published by the Daily Telegraph newspaper. Now, check this out. This goes on to say, while resynthesizing LSD, he accidentally absorbed a small amount of the drug through his fingertips and discovered its powerful effects. He described what he felt as being affected by a remarkable restlessness combined with a slight dizziness. At home, I lay down and I sank into a not unpleasant, intoxicated-like condition, characterized by an extremely stimulated imagination. In a dreamlike state, with eyes closed, I found the daylight to be unpleasantly glaring. I perceived an uninterrupted stream of fantastic pictures, extraordinary shapes with intense kaleidoscopic play of colors. After some two hours, this condition faded away. Let me explain that in modern language, okay? This dude, this, this chemist, okay, was messing around with some chemicals, and he got really high from the chemical we currently call LSD. And he felt great, and he could see all kinds of stuff that he couldn't see before. And it lasted a couple of hours, and... He'll later go on to say that he was very proud of this. This was an accomplishment. He felt like this had many medicinal uh, applications and stuff. Let's read on and see what he actually says, right? Uh, it says, Three days later, on the 19th of April, 1943, Hoffman intentionally ingested 250 uh, micrograms of LSD. Uh, this day is now known as Bicycle Day because he began to feel the effects of the drug as he rode home on a bike. This was the first intentional LSD trip. Hoffman continued to take small doses of LSD throughout much of his life, and always hoped to find a use for it. In his memoir, he emphasized it as a sacred drug. I see the true importance of LSD in the possibility of providing material aid to meditation aimed at the mystical experience of a deeper, comprehensive reality. That's his quote, right? End quote. Quote, end quote. Now, check this out. Further research. Hoffman later discovered um, hallucinogenic tryptamine. He first synthesized you know, it talks about whatever the name of it is, something in a lab. Hoffman became the director of natural products department and continued studying hallucinogenic substances found in Mexican mushrooms and other plants used by Aboriginal people there. This led to the synthesis of psilocybin, uh, psilocybin, psilocybin, the active agent of many magic mushrooms. Hoffman also became interested in the seeds of the Mexican morning glory species, Turbina corimbosa. Sounds like a Harry Potter spell. <laughs> Which are also called ololiqui by, the, ololiqui by the natives. He was surprised to find the active compound of ololiqui, uh, ergine, which was closely related to LSD. Over here, let's read what Hoffman says. It gave me an inner joy an open-mindedness, a gratefulness, open eyes, and an internal sensitivity for the miracles of creation. I think that in human evolution, it has never been as necessary to have this substance, LSD. It is just a tool to turn us into what we are supposed to be. And that's Albert Hoffman's quote from a speech that he made on his 100th birthday believe it or not. Now, let me time out real quick. I just want to jump in because I'm sure people will ask. I've never done LSD. I've never done magic mushrooms. I've never done any of that stuff. Um, I have tried, you know, smoking marijuana, but that was the extent of any, you know, drugs or whatever. I'm super sensitive. Um, and, and I would have to have a guide for things like that. Now, this guy Hoffman, who cherished and adored his own, cre his own findings of these drugs that he created, which are substances, natural substances, right, that can be synthesized into man-made versions or whatever. Check out what he says in his later years, right? Look how happy this guy looks. <laughs> now, I will tell you, I I personally, I don't, I'm not going to take sides on it or anything, but I am saying I support natural remedies. I support plants as medicine. I don't support chopping up and mixing up and all of the cooking and stuff that goes into like making all kinds of weird stuff like crack and stuff like that. Those are shortcuts that have dire effects. Now let's see what Hoffman says. 
Hoffman, in his later years, was interviewed shortly uh, before his 100th birthday and called LSD medicine for the soul and expressed that he was frustrated by the worldwide prohibition of it. He goes on to say, uh, it was used very successfully for 10 years in psychoanalysis, right? That means, what does that mean? That means it was accepted for a time by the government, by mainstream academics, by everyone, right? Because people were researching it. They were looking into it and they were finding out what kind of effects it could have that were helpful for humanity and mankind and womankind. It was used successfully for 10 years, he said, adding that the drug was misused by the counterculture of the 60s and then criticized unfairly by the political establishment of the day. He conceded that it could be dangerous if misused. Duh, right? What isn't dangerous if misused, right? A tub of butter is dangerous if you misuse it, right? Um... So it's dangerous if misused because a relatively high dose of 500 micrograms will have an extremely powerful psychoactive effect, especially if administered to a first-time user without adequate supervision. See that part right there? Oh, you can't see it. Shoot. Anyways, adequate supervision. That means that, um, for example, the native peoples of various countries across the world, um, when they would do or ingest or drink or smoke or whatever their substances uh, for their spiritual reasons to gain enlightenment or medicinally or whatever it was for, they always, they didn't just give it out to random teenagers and say, hey, does life suck? Here, have a bunch of this and, you know, you can be distracted by pretty colors or whatever. That's not what it was all about. And Hoffman knew that. And Hoffman was disappointed that people were misusing it. They weren't using it for the reasons that they that that they could have been to help themselves, right? So the people of old, our ancestors, had guides, spirit guides. Uh, the native people would, would have guides that would help other people to learn how to do this properly, incrementally, and then how to traverse the spirit world, as they would call it, to see the truth of the reality around them. Interesting. So, back to the movie. All right, so this guy, Nada, he leaves, for all intents and purposes, the North Pole, he leaves this church, looks up in the sky, and he's like, oh man, these guys rush out. It's like they're in Oz right now. Because that's where Oz is. Anyways, so these guys rush out, put on their glasses immediately. There's something up there in the sky. It's a helicopter. They're like, oh man, we got, why are they putting on their glasses, right? To see what it really is, to see what's really up there, what's really going on. They put on their Hoffman lenses. Interesting. You see all those chemicals and stuff that was in there? Hmm. So. Now, this guy that's complaining about every time that the truther shows up on television, he goes, I've been hearing something on the streets the last couple of weeks. Weird stuff. Some sort of epidemic of violence is what they've been saying. Now, time out. This is talking to us, and this is reflecting what will happen and what is happening currently in our world, okay? Just before the end times, just before worldwide resets and cataclysms happen, the energy in our world becomes amplified according to my studies um, and experience. (laughs) Um, When the energy is amplified, people, insects, animals, everything becomes more agitated. And therefore, there's violence and wars that break out every single time. He goes on to say, he told me they got some sort of cult up there. Well, wait a minute. Let's talk about this word cult, okay? I'm not a big fan of people using the word cult like it's a bad thing, okay? Cult is just means short for culture, okay? Some some sort of a culture, some sort of a gathering of people who are like-minded. Usually it's said it's it's a uh, demonized because when you people say cult, oh, you belong to a cult. And they almost like spit as they say that. It means that you belong to a culture that I don't like, that I am not like, that I do not personally resonate with. So they get all in their feelings, just like when when something's a wrench is thrown into the system, they get frustrated, they get agitated, they don't know how to properly articulate themselves, so they just start calling names and throwing out magic words like cult, like that. Into the world kind of stuff. He's talking about this cult that develops, or did develop in this movie, where uh, people are focused on the world ending. 
interesting because they don't say that it's the end of the world. They don't they don't really portray this movie as being apocalyptic in nature. However, they are saying that, aren't they? They're saying that this is a end of the world movie. This movie's about the end of the world. This movie is about the apocalypse itself. Why? Because that's when the aliens come into our world or leave this world is during an apocalypse. Uh, what are they doing? They're shooting people, robbing banks. Whole lot of people gone crazy over some nutty dream they just had. Well, are they shooting people? Are they really? Because there's wars and stuff, and people like him would be totally okay with that if we sent the United States Marine Corps out to the middle of the frickin' desert and just obliterated a bunch of innocent families. That wouldn't be seen as shooting a bunch of people and killing and blah, 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 right? No, 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 no. That would be like America, you know, essentially. Some nutty dream. Everyone's having this nutty dream. Well, that's what they, that's the only way they can articulate themselves by uh, dis discriminating against it. They just call it names. They just slap labels on stuff. Um, it's called propaganda. You want to know the truth? Now, he actually is going to tell you the truth. This happens the end of every century. It does. It's just people afraid to face the future. Now, that's a partial truth. Is it people who are just afraid to face the future? Or is it something that happens cyclically because the energy fluxes, it's in fluctuation, it grows and it amplifies and all the pressure in this world builds and builds and builds and builds and it takes a toll on mankind, on humanity. So Rowdy Roddy Piper goes over, he's looking over at the church, totally spying on everyone. His buddy Frank comes up to him, he's like, hey, what's happened? What's going on? He's like, man, leave it alone, leave it alone. Now the sleepers who watch us put on the shades and check things out with fresh new eyesight, we start asking questions. We start poking our nose around where it doesn't belong, right? Authorized only. And we even walk in that direction. People are like, whoa, what are you doing? What are you doing? I was at the Garden of the Gods here in Colorado Springs one time. Literally walked five feet off of a path. There was a sign that said, stay on the path or whatever, right? I didn't <laughs> because I did because I felt like not doing that basically. And next thing I know, some tourist is like, hey, you're not supposed to walk off the path. You know, it was like Agent Smith went and jumped into this dude. So that's what we do. Okay. Now, Frank will open his eyes. We'll get to that part here in a minute. But right now he's like, leave it alone, man. Like, why is he saying this? He's afraid. He's speaking out of pure fear right now. He's like, leave it alone. It ain't none of my business. It ain't none of your business. What does that mean? That means if you start poking around, I intuitively know what's going to happen. You're going to get in trouble. And because I'm associated with you and in proximity to you, that makes me guilty by association. You're going to mess up my life. Thanks a lot. You know? I'm already programmed. I'm following the program. You're not following the program. If they come after you, it's going to mess things up for me, you know, and it's fear speaking out of fear. So he looks over there. They're putting something into this uh, hearse or whatever. He said, he goes, I don't bother nobody. Nobody bothers me. That's what it's all about. He's afraid, afraid of having to stand up for himself, afraid of having to protect himself because right now big brother's protecting him. They're supplying a job under a nice blue sky, uh, giving him little pieces of paper that he can trade for money. I mean, for food and stuff like that. Right. I don't want to mess that up because then I'll have to actually do things for myself essentially. So this guy is still watching, still checking things out. He's literally taking a closer look with binoculars. Now, speaking of taking a closer look, Look at the name of the church. It's called the Episcopal Free Church. Now, they named this church in the movie. So, I mean, why? What does Episcopal mean? Why would they put that in this movie? Well, let's look at the word origin and do some etymology, etymological studies. Epi means close upon, right? It can also mean things like above, upon, on. Carlton, welcome. Welcome, Carlton, to my channel. <laughs> um, so, epi from episcopal, episcopal, means close upon. Okay? It comes from the Proto-Indo-European Proto Proto root word epi or opi, which means near, at, or against. 
close upon. That's where we get that. Scope. Scope. Well, you know what a scope is, right? Whenever you scope into things, if you're playing some Fortnite or whatever, you have a scope on the rifle or whatever, it allows you to see closer or to see. It literally comes from the word spec, like Spock from Star Trek, which means to observe, right? So ep episcopal or episcopal means to observe more closely or essentially to look closer take a closer look that's literally what he's doing with the binoculars and that's literally what we are doing by breaking down the symbolism in this movie so as he's doing this someone else has a scope up there in the sky on their rifle it's the cops they break down in they figure out where all these truthers are inside of this church and uh, the, these, that's, where they're, that's where they're broadcasting their signal, by the way. So the truthers have a signal, and then the aliens have a signal. We haven't got to the aliens yet. We've just been focusing on the truthers right now. The truthers reside in this church, the North Pole, etc., where they broadcast a signal that is usually jammed and stuff. They can't really get it out. They're trying to wake people up. So they put on their sunglasses in the middle of the night. They take off. They're running. Uh, red and blue sirens. Boo, 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 boo. By the way, interesting of note, there is an alien species that is said to come from the star system, Sirius. If you ever look up at the star, Sirius, I pointed it out clear as day to my mom one time. I'm like, oh, check that out. There's, there's a, my mom was like, look at this. Look at, look at that bright light up there. Isn't it really bright? I'm like, yeah, that's the star, Sirius, mom. She's like, how do you know that? I'm like, well, because it's flashing red, white, and blue. And that's where a certain um, alien race is said to have come from and originated from is that star right there that flashes red, white, and blue. Interesting. All right. So the cops pull up and this truck pulls up as well to the church where they're manufacturing these Hoffman lenses. And it says Scientific Investigation Division. Scientific Investigation. Interesting. So they're, they're bringing in scientists with the cops. Hmm. Now, all of a sudden, everything turns red, okay? The atmosphere turns red because they actually throw out these flares and stuff, but it is symbolic of uh, the shift that we go through from the red sky, from the blue sky to the red sky. Now, this guy is, uh, the preacher is being beat up by the cops. Welcome, Jesse. Uh, the preacher is being beat up by the cops and says, he starts quoting the Bible, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, etc. Rod. Pillars. Remember, we did that. We saw that video about the uh, lost tribe of the tree of life, where we talked about the pillar worshippers and things like that. The um, the rod god, right? All of that. All right. So they beat up the preacher. The guys in black and white. They go over and beat him up under the red the red uh, colors. We go back to the green color on the inside of the church the next day, where Rowdy Rowdy Piper's checking things out. Finds a box, and inside of that box or container, there is a whole bunch of these special Hoffman glasses that allow people to see a little bit differently. Now, we haven't figured out yet what they can see. We're going to we're going to figure it out now because this guy, who's your average Joe, opens them up and he's like, "This this is why all these cops raided everything and beat people up and shot people and stuff. Some sunglasses, something doesn't add up, right? So he doesn't he doesn't know what's going on. He thinks that he just stumbled upon some trash, I guess, right? He's kind of disappointed, honestly, but he doesn't understand how valuable this new perspective is and how dangerous it is to the authorities. So he's walking down the street and he's like, well, you know, got a pair of sunglasses, might as well just put them on. Boom. Puts on the sunglasses, looks and sees what he can see looks at this sign, okay? He looks at this, actually at first, without the sunglasses, he sees this billboard. Looks just like this. Let's zoom in on the billboard and check it out. It's actually pretty important. It says, we're creating the transparent computing environment. Control data. This might as well say Facebook, okay? Or Meta, or whatever, all kinds of different things, okay? They're all connected, basically. But... It's blue, just like Facebook is, but it says we're we're creating the transparent computing environment. Blah, 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 blah. What does he see? What does it say when he puts on the glasses? Obey, obey. Do what we tell you to do. It's all about control. 
Another thing I want to point out too is we'll come back to this later, but the color has gone. Interesting. Why is the color gone? Do you suppose? Well, I'll give you some, my idea here in a bit. So he puts on the glasses. He's like, he's like, wait a minute. Whoops. 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 Mind blown, right? So he looks at another one. He's like, okay, come to the Caribbean or the Caribbean if you prefer. Um, wow. Okay. So, so what? It's just a billboard. It's got this chick. She's clearly enjoying herself in the Caribbean. What does it really mean though? Mary, I spat all over myself. Did you see that? Um, Mary, Mary and reproduce. Oh my God. It's embarrassing. Uh, Mary and reproduce. That's exactly what it's saying. He looks at another one. Oh, what does this say? Put on the glasses. Check it out. No independent thought. No thinking for yourself. This is everywhere. This is t the entire world says all kinds of stuff. Work for eight hours. Sleep for eight hours, if that. Play for eight hours. Obey. Consume. Conform. Stay asleep. Watch TV. Ooh, that's another one. So now he's like, what, what else are you going to do but walk around and see what you can see while these things work? Who knows how long these glasses are going to do this for, right? This is a miracle to him. He's looking at everything. All of a sudden, he went from just walking around, right? Just whatever. He's just like, uh, whatever, you know. Saw some crazy stuff. Probably have to go back to work at the construction place tomorrow. You know, thinking about his stuff. Just walking around, seeing things for what they are. Not thinking twice about anything. All of a sudden, the whole world changes everything changes everything becomes of super interest to him now all of a sudden because his perspective has changed so he looks over at the stuff it says bye stay asleep no independent thought watch tv don't think obey obey everywhere stay asleep submit now is this is this pfft. Hold on. Let's let's bring this home. Let's bring this home to some reality, okay? You might just think, oh, that's a crazy part of the movie. That makes it pretty interesting for a movie, right? Well, yeah. This is the most real part of the movie, in my particular opinion, right? These are called subliminal messages. They are subliminal. They are sublime. They are just, just beneath your ability to cognitively... Uh, recognize things, to think about things, to perceive things. This is all perception filters. This right here is the reality. And you would think, that's not real. Well, yes, subliminal messages are real. But mostly, they when they leaked subliminal messaging, they leaked it as if it's like all Coke's fault or Sprite or Disneyland or whatever. Not the government. Not the govern mint not them surely they wouldn't do that to their own people right well check this out i'm going to share quite a few pictures with you that are still frames from what was uh, a broadcast from when when i was uh, a, barely a child and i'm sure some of you older people remember this they used to play the national anthem on television and they used subliminal messages right down here where the words to the national anthem would pop up because people don't know the national anthem. They don't know all the words. They're going to read along and follow the bouncing ball or whatever it was, right? So check this out. Right before these words flashed onto the screen for the briefest of a second, other words would flash onto the screen. You can look this up if you'd like to. They still have this up on YouTube or wherever other media outlets you can get. No, it has not been changed. No, this is not photoshopped. This is original footage from the television. Look down here. It says rebel, 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 oh, rebel. What, what does it say? What does it say? Now, remember, this is a flash of a flash. I had to, I had to redo this so many times just to catch it. Rebel, Eon. See right there? Over here is the actual real words. What does the real word say? Uh, the bombs bursting in air. That's, that's the part of the song. The bombs bursting in air. Whatever. I don't know how it goes. Right? But look at the words right before. I want to touch the screen right now. Look at it right before. It says, rebellion is not 
tolerated. Holy crap, are you serious? They played this during the 50s or 60s or 70s or whatever it was. I don't know. They played this forever, okay? Every morning before you watched your programming, this would come on TV. Every night, I believe, this would uh, be the signing off. This would be the last thing that you see or listen to. And I'm sure there's probably something going on with the audio as well, right? Wow. The bombs bursting in air. Rebellion will not be tolerated. Let's do it again real quick. I'm just going to go through it real quick, okay? Try to catch it, right? Now, this, this video, the only reason I could catch this is because it was already slowed down to like 25% or whatever. And then I had to go in and manipulate it to slow it down even further, another 25% or whatever. So, rebellion is not tolerated. Then we have this next verse that says, uh, that our flag was still there. <laughs> let's check this one out. Okay, let's slow that down a bit. Go back over it, right? Right there. Uh, what does it say? One sec. I got to remember. Oh, it says obey, consume, obey, consume. Okay, cool. So it's, this is... This is from a freaking over over half of a century ago. And it says obey, consume. Exactly like it says in the movie when Ro Rowdy Roddy Piper puts on the glasses. Obey, consume. All over the place. You think they just made that up? No. This has been in effect actively in our lives. Look, check this out. It's hard to see, but it's right here. It says, uh, it says, this part says consume. This is going to be consume right here. So keep your eyes right here. I'm going to move it forward. Consume. You see the zoom right there? Consume. Obey right there. Obey. Consume. Obey. Consume. Obey. There it is. Boom. And then when these letters disappear, right? Another set pop up. And look, you can see it. The original. Obey. I I got it right there in all of its little glory. Obey. Says it right there. Like, this was fed to all of your grandparents and parents at the very least. Every morning, twice a day probably, all the time. On the television. So you think that this is just a movie? That they're just, oh, that it's just an interesting movie plot that they're sending secret signals through the TVs and stuff. No, look, consume, consume, obey, consume. There it is again. What does that one say? <laughs> it's hard to see with these glasses on. Oh, if these glasses were polarized, I would not even be wearing them right now because I wouldn't be able to see the screen. It's really interesting. It, polarized glasses have the ability to essentially make electronic things on television and computers and phones and stuff disappear. So if you want to be less distracted, wear your polarized sunglasses. Anyway, what does this one say? Uh, worship. Well, this is the line. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave showing you the flag or whatever? Uh, it says worship the government, I believe. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyways, that's enough of that. Okay, the whole thing is like that. I highly encourage you guys to go check it out. If I can remember, I'll leave a link to that particular video after this. But wow, mind-blowing, real-life stuff. So he starts looking at all these books. Interesting, there's an Edgar Casey book right there. Um, what else do we got? What does that say? Hold on. Ah, anyways, he picks up a magazine. It says, stay asleep, obey. Oh, the sunglasses, by the way came from this movie, Big Trouble in Little China. I don't know if you guys knew that, but the production was so low on John Carpenter's They Live that they had to reuse all these props. This is one famous prop, which was, uh, which was the, <laughs> the sunglasses that were used in the Pork Chop Express, which is one of my favorite movies ever. Anyways, all right, so he's looking at it. It says, buy, do not question authority, all these subliminal messages. However, if you take it off, off the sunglasses, it looks just like this. You just see a bunch of garbled letters and words and images that were specifically chosen because they speak to you at a subconscious level. Be careful of the things you eat. And by eat, I mean consume. And by consume, I mean take into yourself through your ears, through your eyes and your nose and your mouth. Be careful. So he looks up, he looks over at this guy. 
He's like, what's your problem? Huh? What's your problem? Oh my God. He looks just like an, an evil alien looking dude, right? Some zombie looking dude. What's your problem? What's that? That's pretty much what I would expect a zombie to say, right? Not, Hey, what's up? Hey, how's it going, man? What you reading? You having a good day? You know, good vibes. Yeah. No. What's your problem? He's like, no way. Whoops. Takes off his glasses. Holy crap. He still looks like an alien. <laughs> He's look at, I could have pinned this dude. And you know what? Sometimes we feel like that. Sometimes we feel like we could have pinned these guys um, for being guys, girls, whoever. So, I mean, they, they're, they're, whatever it is going on with them, they tend to look evil. They tend to, their face and, and everything, the body language, all of it. See, you don't need the physical, actual sunglasses to see it. You can look right at this dude. Look at him. I don't know. He's an actor or whatever. I don't care. But geez, man, I would not be surprised. Not, not one bit. I would not be surprised. I said, what's your problem? Right? Huh? What's your problem, dude? Huh? You want me to call 911? Huh? You want me to get the boys to come out here? Huh? Right? This dude's not really stepping up to the plate. This dude's not really saying like, what's up? You got a problem? You want to do something? No, nah, he's not. He's saying, I'm protected by the system. What's your problem? Huh? Don't look my way. Don't keep looking at me. <clears throat> Why doesn't he want him to look at him? Because he's an alien. Okay? Now, people will throw out there all kinds of different theories and ideas. I'm going to give you my perspective. Okay? It's just my perspective. And there could be various perspectives and truths um, layered on top of this. Okay? I'm not a big physical shape-shifting kind of person. Um if you believe in that, totally fine with me. Hey, whatever. It, all things are possible. Everything's possible. I'm more like he's looking at the dude's aura. He's looking at his energy. He can see something differently um, than just the physical shape-shifting. We're going to get into that more here in a bit. I'll explain what I mean. Um, but if you like the, the idea of people physically growing and changing and stuff like that, hey, I love it. All, all things are possible. Let me know how you think it's done. I would love to, to read about it. So this guy looks down at the money, right? And he's like, I wonder what that looks like. What does that say on there? This is your God. This is pieces of paper. People worship. People think about getting, getting more of all the time. They don't want more good vibes. They don't want more life. They don't want more health or anything. They want more pieces of paper, little tokens, little tickets. That's what they want. So he looks over at the traffic light and there's this guy going, sleep, sleep, sleep. And there's this little um, device at the top of the traffic light. I didn't get a picture of it because I forgot to. But if you look in your local town, you'll see all kinds of weird devices that they have installed on like every single traffic light. They're trying to make us think that they're just cameras. That's it. It's for people that run a red light or miss a yellow or something like, oh, we've got you on camera. <sighs> Please, man, I'm sure maybe there are a very few of those that actually take pictures of your license plate or whatever it may be. I don't know, man. I have purposefully ran red lights just to see if I'm going to get a ticket from the little thing or whatever. Now, the ones that do give tickets, I can tell you, especially if you live in California are the ones that flash. Whoosh, they literally take a picture, okay? But these other ones, I don't know. That's Those are kind of weird. Anyways, so he's checking everything out. He's got a brand new sight, brand new vision. He's looking at these, these ugly beings that are in there trying to like beautify themselves. And if you listen, if you eavesdrop on these conversations, they're the most basic, base, dumb conversations about nothing that really matters whatsoever when you see these aliens talking to the humans, right? They're just trying to, they're in there trying to keep them, you know, hey, so how was the weather yesterday where you live? Oh my God, do you know it rained yesterday? Oh really? Oh my goodness, blah, 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 right? That's just all they're talking about. Stay asleep, obey. And these aliens are in there encouraging them, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. What you're talking about is really interesting. But what they're talking about is what they've been programmed to talk about or to think about or to consider or discuss. This lady is like, can you believe it? She didn't even go to Lama's class. <sighs> okay. I want to talk about aliens. I want to talk about earthquakes and the sky opening and Sasquatch and um, chakras and energetic 
principles, and I want to talk about all of that. She didn't go to Lamaze class. Did it rain where you live? Blah, blah, blah. Come on. Stop with that. So he walks into a grocery store, right? This is how many of you, including myself from time to time, have seen the grocery stores, right? Oh, just a bunch of stuff. Val, hey, Val's, Val forgot the bubble gum, but she's here to do something else. All right, so then he looks at it. He puts on his glasses, right? Boom, consume, stay asleep, all over the place, all in black and white. All these aliens all over the place getting their products and stuff. And then she's like, I was shocked. She served blue corn tortillas. This is their conversations they're having. These alien people are talking about the dumbest, most uninterested. This is me personally, okay? Like, maybe if I was like this, I'd be like, wow, really? Serious? Blue corn tortillas? Get out of here. That's so weird. Why would they be blue? I mean, who uses blue corn tortillas? Whoa. Whoa. What are you talking about? Like, stop. I don't want want to talk about blue corn tortillas. I want to talk about blue beings and aliens and stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, that's so dated. Ha 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 ha. They have this real basic lame conversation where they're talking about absolutely nothing of importance whatsoever, right? They're empty of energy. They're running on empty. Then this guy, the human, okay, you could tell he's human, right? Uh, he's like, I'm so depressed, man. I don't know what to do. And he thinks he's talking to another human. So let's see what the non-human says to this guy. It's basically saying he's suicidal, right? I'm depressed. I don't know what to do. He's like, Hey, just go for it, man. He's very alpha male, right? He's got nothing to worry about. He's like, well, that's easy for you to say you got the promotion. So the alien guy who's a total douchebag is like, yeah, whatever. Don't worry about it. Just go for it. He says, look, it'll come. All right. Just don't worry about it. They always say that. When you start worrying about things, they're like, oh, don't worry about it, man. Like, don't don't worry about that kind of stuff. Don't Basically, don't think about it. When people tell you not to worry about it, usually what they really mean is don't think about it. Stop talking to me about it. I don't like where you're going with this, right? You're taking away my promotion. You're taking away my uh, potential and my energy. So he looks up at the TV. There's like a presidential campaign or something going on big old obey in the background, which you know is a flag, essentially. He's like, fresh, vital. The old cynicism is gone. It really boils down to our ability to accept, right? This is how, this is how they sound to me all the time. This is why I don't talk about politics on my channel. I don't care. You might as well talk about blue corn tortillas, I'm not talking about politics. I can't stand their their witchcraft and their spellcraft. I can't believe people buy into it. I can't believe people are interested or shocked or get get so involved in this drama. This this um what what, what does Walt Whitman call it? Um I forget. Anyways, it's, it's, it's a drama, okay? It's, it's just garbage. It's fake. It's programming. It's telling you how to feel about certain things, about the things they want you to think about. Everything else that they don't talk about is probably the important stuff. And that's the only reason I would ever watch any of it, is just to believe in the opposite of whatever the hell they're talking about. We don't need pessimism says the president of whatever place in this movie. We don't need pessimism. First of all, listen to this spellcraft. He says we. No, 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 no. There's no we. You are not with me, buddy. Okay? We're not the we're not on the same team. But when these presidents and these queens and these popes and these people are talking to you, they use pronouns like this. This is spellcraft. This is witchcraft. This is magic. This is sorcery at its simplest. And it's really easy once you pick up on it, once you put on the glasses, right? We don't need pessimism. There is no we. You're talking about yourself. You're representing yourself. You're not representing me, okay? I do need pessimism. I need, I need, I need there to be a counterbalance to everything. I need it to be fair. That's what I need, right? And then he's talking about what we need, what we need. Okay, wait a minute. What do we need? The earth provides everything that we could ever need. Therefore, we lack no need whatsoever. We we have no need. No need whatsoever. We live on a place that continually supplies all of our necessities. Water, food, air, shelter. It's all there. 
There are no needs in life, except for those fallacies that people like this guy will talk about. What we need, we don't, I don't need, I need nothing, buddy, and I definitely don't need you. We don't need pessimism. Well, what he means when he says pessimism, I wish they would change the words when they put on the glasses too. <laughs> I wish they had like, they live earbuds or something um, so that they can restructure what everybody says. We don't need pessimism. Well, when he says pessimism, he means people that disagree with the program. People who go against the flow of the programming. And he's looking at him just like me. Uh, yes, uh, this, this is exactly how I feel when I watch this dumb stuff. When I, whenever I happen to see it. I don't watch it. I just happen to see it sometimes. And, he, and he's like, there are no limits. And this guy's, why? this guy's busting up. He's like, what? It figures it would be something like this. It does, right? It totally does. He See, he knew it. He knew it. You know it. Deep down, we all know that's bull crap. It's baloney. And it's not Oscar... Uh, Meyer, M-A-Y-A-R, it's M-A-Y-E-R, speaking of baloney. <clears throat> Anyways, so this lady, right, totally bumps into him, gives him like a little shoulder charge and knocks him onto the ground. And she's like, oh, excuse me, you know, all douchey sounding and stuff. And he looks at her and he's like, you know, you look like your head fell in the cheese dip back in 1957. Uh, if you didn't understand the reference, he's talking, he's most likely referencing, um, oh, Val, hey, thanks, Val, for the paper. <laughs> Super appreciate it. Um, he's talking about, when he's talking about cheese dip, he's talking about, um, man, what is that stuff called? Fondue, right? Fondue was really popular back then. Anyways, it was like heated, heated cheese, basically. So basically, she's, he's saying that her face looks like it's melted. Now look at her. I could have pegged her for an alien already to begin with. She probably is. The people that there have, like, if, if, if this movie represents the truth of our, of our reality, I would have guessed already before I even put on the glasses. Oh, you're probably, you're probably an alien. Yeah. You're probably one of those zombie aliens. And then she's like, oh, and then he goes, you see, I take these glasses off. She looks like a regular person. Doesn't she? Huh? Put them back on from maldehyde face. That's what we got. And then the, the store owner's like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's enough out of you, buddy, because he doesn't have the same perspective, right? He doesn't share that perspective. Now, let's talk about Walter John Kilner. Walter John Kilner was a medical electrician. Medical electrician. Yes, uh, that's a fancy word. And witchcraft for shock therapist, okay? Medical electrician at St. Thomas Hospital in London. There from 1879 to 1893, he was in charge of electrotherapy. He also, and I'm not saying that you can't use electricity to like, to heal. Yes, you can, but you can very much also misuse it to destroy and turn people into zombies, right? Which, by the way, is the premise for Wizard of Oz Part 2, that's how it all begins. Dorothy is about to go under shock therapy for telling people about her adventures in Oz, right? For being creative and whatnot. Anyway, he wrote papers on a range of subjects, but is today best remembered for his late study, The Human Atmosphere. Now, the human atmosphere, that's just fancy words for the aura, the human aura, right? He attempted to invent devices by which the naked eye might be trained to observe auric activity, which he hypothesized was probably ultraviolet radiation. Zoe! What's up, Zoe? Good to see you. Uh, stating that the phenomena that he saw uh, was not affected by electromagnets. They called these Kilner screens. Glass slides or Kilner screens containing alcoholic solutions of variously colored dyes including a blue coal tar dye called dicyanin, were used as filters in Kilner goggles. Do you see this word dicyanin down there, how it's red? That means whatever information they did have on that is gone. And when it's red like that in Wikipedia, it means it was taken away. So... You can't look up dicyanin on Wikipedia anymore. Interesting. So basically, there's this chemical that this guy was putting into screens, glasses, etc., um, called dicyanin, which helped him to see 
into um, the different color spectrums, including like the ultraviolet color spectrum. When he did, according to his study, Kilner and his associates were able on many occasions to perceive auric formations. That's the human aura. That is your spirit that extends outside of your human body. It is a reality, not pseudoscience, not any of that stuff in my personal opinion, uh, but very much a real life part of the world. <clears throat> now, according to a study, they were able to perceive auric formations, which he called the etheric double. The inner aura and the outer aura extending several inches from the patient's naked bodies. And his book gave instructions by which the reader could construct and use similar goggles. Right? Hold on. Let me make this a little smaller so you can see the picture here. See, there's a little example of it over here on the side. It shows, this is a drawing from, uh, allegedly from the book, where it shows a person, and then they shows like this sort of secondary like glow that they have, like real close to the skin. And then on the outside, this is important. I want you to pay close attention to this. The aura that is around, that, that, that doesn't conform to the shape of like the actual body is more of like an egg. It's like an egg shape. And they would draw this egg shape on these pictures. Interesting to me because I read a really interesting series of books by an author called Carlos Castaneda. Highly recommend these books. Carlos Castaneda wrote this book called A Separate Reality. Further conversations with Don Juan. Who's Don Juan? Well, Don Juan was this Mexican shaman, okay, essentially. And remember how I said whenever you use these these certain illicit drugs or whatever they are, um, you know, whatever peyote, LSD, all these different ones. Welcome, Virgil. Hey, good to see you. Um, you need a spirit guide. You need somebody who is there, who's been through it, who's going to guide you and help you um, in, in how to use it and how to respond whenever you're having a different experience or a separate reality, right? So interesting thing about the egg shape of the aura is that's exactly how Don Juan had described it to Carlos Castaneda, who had studied with Don Juan and was doing, um, you know, various substances that Don Juan was giving to him in like uh, various micro doses and then larger doses and stuff like that. Um, Carlos Castaneda would eventually get so good at seeing into the spirit world when he looked at people in the physical world, he would see this egg shaped light around them. And that's exactly how he described it. Here is a sort of, you know, somebody had a drawing or whatever. I think this might be Carlos Castaneda's drawing actually, because he was talking about how that egg shape can stretch and change. Uh, great wizards of the past knew how to manipulate their auras and use their auras to extend outwards. Interesting read. Here is uh, what they call Carolian photography. I think that's what it's called. <coughs> Excuse me, one moment. <coughs> Sorry about that. My, so when I talk a lot, I'll start running out of uh, voice. Oh, the cranberry juice helps though. All right, so this looks like an eyeball. It's not. That black point is a fingertip, and all that light around it is an aura. That is the aura that surrounds that person's finger when they touched um, this electric plate. So they started doing this type of photography. They would put, for example, here's raw food on the left. They put that on an electrical plate, took a picture of it, and boom, look at the energy in and around this thing. They put cooked food on the right, and it's got a lot less energy. So a lot of people are making the connection, hey, it's better to eat raw food than it is to eat cooked food. Here's a picture of somebody who put their hand on and took a picture of it um, with their aura. These are pictures of people. If you zoom in, you can see they have the ability to take photographs of people's auras. Now, I can't say if these are authentic or not authentic or whatnot, but the concept behind it is very real and is very authentic. And people's auras, uh, they change shape, they change colors, they change sizes because they represent your energy and your true self and what's going on around you. So they've taken hundreds and thousands of pictures of people and captured their auras for them to see. This is really interesting. Uh, this is from another YouTube channel. I can't remember the name, but I did take a picture of it, so I'll show you here in a bit. But as you can see at the top part of the screen, it's sort of black and white, right? 
Dan, thank you. Oh, jeez, Dan, thank you for all the paper. I appreciate it. Um, so take a, take a look at this, right? At the top, it's black and white. They show you these two bottles of clear liquid. They're like, one of these is carbonated. Can you tell which one is carbonated soda? They put on a special filter that allows you to see in the ultraviolet spectrum. When you put on this filter, because it, when you put when you put this filter on, everything has this sort of black and white look to it. See how it's all sort of black and white up there? Boom. You can tell which one is the soda. This one literally turns blue. And it's like, wow, you can see something whenever you put that filter on that you could not see before. Wow. So before, if you were to walk into the grocery store, you would just see two things look like they're both water or whatever. Boom. Put on your special glasses that allow you to see into the ultraviolet spectrum. And all of a sudden, you can see there's a clear difference between these two bottles. Various types of insects and uh, animals and stuff, they share this as well. Now, look at this. This is a picture of the guy from the YouTube channel, which I'll share with you here in just a minute. But he has two fake or false front teeth. If you looked at him without this, um, this filter that allows you to see into the ultraviolet uh, realm, you wouldn't be able to tell that he had fake teeth. But when you put on the special glasses, thank you, Val. When you put on the special glasses, they light up. They light up like little lights. Interesting. So it allows you to see things you could not previously see. Whenever you put on these special UV glasses, the world is more black and white, right? There's a lot less color, uh, like, like the color spectrum that we see. And you can see all of the details in this guy's face. You can see freckles and stuff that you can't see on the regular color spectrum. When you look at the world, it's more foggy. Um, it's all more black and white, more foggy. If you look at these lenses on, on the right without them, right, you can see right through this lens. But it this lens, as many sunglasses and regular eyeglasses do, um, you know, the world's worried about ultraviolet light getting into our heads or whatever, <laughs> whatever. Um, that's frustrating for me personally. I spent like an hour trying to find glasses that allow you to see into the ultraviolet realm or to the infrared realm or the near infrared realm. All right. Good luck. Uh, if you know how to get those, please leave a link in the chat. Let me know. But these ones block them out. So they're dark on this side, right? They look like sunglasses on this side, but in reality, they're not. This lens up here allows it to pass through. It allows the ultraviolet spectrum to pass through the lens. So when you look at it without the glasses, it looks like it's all shady and dark. You can't see through it. When you look at it with the ultraviolet lens, you can see right through it. You can see things that were not there that you could not perceive before. This is real. It's just a different spectrum. It's different light and, and frequencies and waves. You can see the same thing with the two different sodas, right? One of these literally lights up. This reminds me of Avatar, right? What if the light spectrum in our world changes? Right now, we've got one kind. What if something happens during an apocalyptic scenario that flips the type of light that enters into our world? Now things are glowing. Now things look more like Pandora from Avatar. Look at this pretty blue liquid called liquid detergent on the left with regular stuff. Put on the ultraviolet... Um, the glasses that let you see into ultraviolet, it looks like motor oil. It looks disgusting and gross, right? Wow, look at the difference between those two things. One is also black and white, just like in They Live. He puts on the glasses, he sees more in black and white, right? Or sort of like a sepia tone type color. This girl and this guy, you would think they were attractive, you know, good looking people or whatever, right? But then when you put the sunglasses on, whoosh, all of a sudden, you can see details that were not there before, stuff that's covered up by like uh, the different colors that we have or whatever. You can see all these freckles on her face. Before, you don't see any blemishes whatsoever. Put on the glasses, boom, formaldehyde face. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I'm not, uh, she's a pretty girl or whatnot. I'm just joking around. But anyways, um, for example, put on sunscreen that blocks out UV radiation. On the left, it's all black. It's all smeared. When you put it on the right, you can barely see it in the regular color spectrum. It turns blue. This is how many animals see. They can see things that are invisible to us. Why do you think cats freak out from time to time? Like at thin air 
Well, it's not thin air. They see something there. There's something beyond our sight that they can see. This channel, by the way, I highly encourage uh, watching this video for more information about it. It's called Veritasium. Veritasium. So that's the name of the channel, and the name of the video is The World in UV. So make sure you check that out. Uh, check this out. This is really interesting. So while searching for uh, dicyanin, that chemical, which is now illegal, by the way, they've made this chemical illegal for some reason. Like, pfft. What is, what is, it's not like it's a, it's not like it's even close to LSD or anything, right? It's just a chemical that they're putting on sunglasses. They made it, they, the government made it illegal to have this particular chemical. When these guys were looking at people's auras using this chemical, I found that this year, only a few months ago, a couple of months ago, uh, Friday, October 1st, 2021, a trademark application was filed for Dicyanin Aura Glasses with the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Somebody out there, uh, let's see, what's this guy's name? Uh, Castonius, welcome, Castonius Prime. Uh, where is it? Anyways, you could look this up on the internet. I don't want to get it. We've already gone into this a lot, so let's move forward. Uh, here's, here's an article of the human aura as it was last photographed. As you can see, they have the egg shape that goes around the, the person, right? Thanks for popcorn. Egg shape goes around the person. Now, this lady is like, whoa, formaldehyde face. There's only one way he can know that. I've got one that can see. So she talks into her watch, right? They all, all of a sudden, they start like, oh, there's a white male. He's over here. He's tall, got long hair, blah, blah, blah. Like they all get on the horn. This is huge for them. I've got one that can see. And all of a sudden, they all get their attention, right? He gets all of their attention. Uh, he's a tall Caucasian male, etc. They start describing him, right? This is huge. They start talking into their wristwatches. At a time when this movie came out, we didn't have smart watches or any of these stupid Apple gadgets or whatever they were. Uh, this is from the show Get Smart. This was seen as a spoof. This was seen as a joke. This was something that wasn't real. Or Dick Tracy, right? This was futurism, right? That eventually, like, you know, that, that people had... Uh, watches that were smart watches that they could talk to other people on two way wrist radios or whatever. He's like, I don't like this one bit, not one bit. He gets out of there. All the, all the little alien people, he can see them right now. Are they shape shifting just because he puts on glasses or whatever? Are they like physically turning? No, because everybody else sees them as being normal. That's why I lean more towards a uh, perception filter. There is a signal. Whoa totally bumped into my desk. There's a signal that's put out that blocks and changes how we perceive the world. It's not just these people. It's not like the magazine is shape-shifting. It's not like the signs are shape-shifting or anything, right? It's a perception filter. It changes your perception on the things you see. He looks at this lady who's checking herself out and he's like, that's like pouring perfume on a pig. And she's like, oh, oh, Oh my goodness, how rude. Blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden the cops come in, just like in the Matrix, right? Hey, welcome, welcome, Martison. So the cops come in. Now, not all the cops, you'll see, not all the cops are aliens, okay? But a lot of them are, <laughs> like in the movie at the very least. He's like, where'd you get those glasses, huh? And he sees them for what he really looks like. And see how it says consume, submit? That's what these guys are all about, right? Go go buy something and, and make sure that you stand in line. Make sure that you don't veer off the path. Make sure you follow the rules just like a good little cattle would, right? These guys are the sheepdogs, essentially. And he's like, we got him. We got him. He gets on his two-way wrist radio. Boom! This Rowdy Roddy Piper is not taking it. He's like, forget this, man. He's not human. Pow! Takes this dude out. Not just because he's not human, but because of what he represents, what he is a part of. He's a part of a system that is essentially there to design slaves and to manufacture slaves, to, 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 to abuse and to ma manipulate us. So a siren goes off. He walks. He's just looking to some place to walk into to get away from the cops. He happens to walk into a bank, does not rob the bank. OK, he's not looking for little pieces of paper or whatever. Walks in all of a sudden. Oh, my word. He's got a gun. He's got a gun. Oh, no, he's got a gun. Right. Um, that didn't used to be a big deal. 
okay? If this was the Wild West, nobody would go, Oh, oh he's got a gun! Oh, a gun! Oh my god, a weapon! That's That used to be normal life, okay? That used to be the way things are. People realized that there's others out to get them, and they needed to protect themselves instead of hiring security guards and pol policy enforcers, etc. right? So they're like, oh my god, look at him, look at him, he's got a gun. Oh, and then they emphasize the word gun like it's freaking a vat of acid he's going to throw in your face or something. I don't know. Don't know what made me think of that, <clears throat> but anyway. So he's looking around, sees all the aliens everywhere, and he's like, oh no, man. <laughs> Are you serious? So... He's armed. He already knows they're going to tell on him. He already knows he's screwed. There's nowhere he can go or hide. So he's like, let's do this. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And they're like, what? And I'm all out of bubblegum. Then he starts blowing people away, right? <laughs> There's a huge shootout or whatever. Um, yeah, he's out, he's out of bubblegum. Okay. The, the consumerism part is the bubblegum part, right? Go buy a bubblegum, go eat your aspartame, go chew on, you know, for friggin' bubblegum or whatever. Right. He's like, that's what I'm here. I'm here to chew bubblegum consumerism and to kick ass. Unfortunately, I got these glasses on that have taken away my consumerism slavery. So I'm all out of bubblegum. I'm just here to kick ass. <clears throat> so this guy starts telling on him. White male, thirties, long hair, wearing sunglasses, disappears, right? All of a sudden, he's just gone, right? So he takes off. He's running around. He looks up at the sky, and lo and behold, there's drones in this movie. Way before we even had the idea of, you know, main drone, like drones that you could go buy or whatever, drones up in the sky. He's like, and who are you, little fella? All of a sudden, his rowdy, rowdy Piper voice kicks in. <laughs> You come to show him where I am? Not nice. Blows it away, right? Shoots it right out of the sky. Good. Great. Yes. Good for you, buddy. Because guess what? There's all kinds of weird stuff flying around in the sky. And how many of you, us, we, how many of us just accept it? Oh, it's a plane. Oh, it's just a plane. Whatever. What's on that plane? Where's that plane coming from? What's the agenda of that plane? Why is there clouds coming out of it? What's going on up there? Like, what, what business does that plane have doing right above my house? I, that plane could easily just take me out, drop drop something crazy on me, right? In other countries, that's not acceptable. But here, we just, we're oblivious, right? Now, he looks at this cop, totally human. So, he's like, drop your weapon, scram, get out of here, man. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to kill you. I can see your vibes, I can see your energy, you know, there's good cops out there, there's good doctors, there's good, you know, whatever's out there. Doesn't mean they all are, but there are, right? So he lets them live. He's got a conscience, right? He's not just out to kill everybody. Now, he jumps in this car with this lady. This lady I pegged from the start as being an alien. Turns out she's not an alien, but she might as well be an alien because she's totally working for the aliens, right? So he has her, he, he, he says, drive me to your house or whatever. And she's all like, oh, you can do whatever you want to me. Just don't hurt me, etc." He's like, do what I want to you. What the, f what are you even talking about? Like, lady, the world is being overrun by aliens that are pretending to be humans, etc. Like, I don't, I could care less about raping you or stealing from you or whatever. Like my entire world is upside down right now. Then look what he says. He takes the glasses off and he is like, whew. It's like a drug. Wow. Like he, he regards the glasses as a drug. Interesting, right? Because we were just talking about how they're called Hoffman glasses, named after the guy who invented LSD and magic mushrooms, essentially. He's like, it's like a drug. Interesting. So if you wear these glasses for too long, it you come down hard. It starts to affect you physically, etc. So, hey. Could the glasses represent actual plants that change people's perspective on life and allow you to see into the spirit world? That is a possibility. They are referred to like they're drugs quite often throughout this movie. Wearing these glasses makes you high. 
But, oh, man, you come down hard, right? You can't do it all the time, okay? We're not meant to right now. Otherwise, we just would. We would just see like that all of the time. Now, there's various levels to this, like I said. There's opening your eyes. There's having a new vision through independent research and insight into the world that we live in, seeing things differently. There's the there's the uh, the, the natural remedies and plants and stuff that are little nature's helpers that help you to see into the spirit world and stuff. Uh, there's actual aliens and there's all, there's all kinds of levels to this. So you can see it on whatever level you're on. Uh, so this lady happens to work at cable 54, right? The ones who are programming everyone. She throws him out of the window. Boom. The glass breaks. Rowdy, Rowdy Piper falls down, loses his glasses, goes right to his buddy. He's like, man, I gotta, I gotta share this. What does he want to do? What do we want to do? When we first put on these glasses, right? We want someone else to put them on too. We don't want to be the only ones walking around, looking at everything, seeing everything all weird and different and therefore appearing to everyone and, and those closest to us as being weird and strange and different. We're like, put these on, man. Put these on and look around. Look at the world around you. So he's like, Psst, buddy. And he's like, I don't want anything to do with you. No, you're trouble. You're going to bring trouble into my life, etc. They put his face on the TV now. What did he do, right? Well, he's exposing the truth. So they make him an outcast and they tell the rest of the world. They don't tell him like, hey, this guy's wanted for uh, wearing glasses that allow you to see that we're all really aliens and using you all as slaves. Of course, that's not going to be on the news. They're going to put his face on the news and be like, uh, this guy is a Nazi spy or, you know, whatever. This guy murders people or all kinds of weird stuff which is sort of true. Anyways, here's the garbage can. Uh, I talked about the garbage can symbolism before. We've seen the garbage truck. I'm in the garbage truck. The garbage truck pop up from time to time and the glasses were in a trash can. He hid them in a trash can. The trash can was picked up by the garbage man. Now he's sifting through the garbage looking for his relic, looking for his sacred technology. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Know what I mean? Say no more. Say no more. Huh? This harkens to a time when our world will be full of debris that's left over from the apocalypse, from the plasma apocalypse. And people will sift through that debris and go on special sacred and holy missions to find technology left over from the time before. Technology they cannot replicate, Technolo technology that they don't know how to really use anymore. They have to repurpose it and uh, reconstruct it. So he finds the box. He finds the container. Finds his friend who's actually there, has his back, throws him some money. He's like, here, here's your pay. Now get to leave me alone. He says, you better find your place, uh, find yourself someplace to hide and keep praying nobody finds you. So then he looks on the glass. He's like, whoa, is my buddy one of them? He's not. Yes, my buddy's not one of them. Hey, thanks for the paper, Mac Attack. Appreciate you. So, he's like, you're a human. Oh, bro, bro, bro. You have to see what I see. You need to look at this. Look at this, right? Now, check this out. He jumps way too fast, in my opinion, okay? And in my opinion, many of us have done this, okay? The second we put on the glasses, we want to force other people to put them on too. But like I talk about, it does not make for a very good experience for those people. They don't seem willing to do it, right? Imagine what this scene would have looked like if he was like, you know, hey, bro, listen, look, if I put these glasses on, I can see some people are literally aliens and you can tell who's an alien and who's not. He doesn't explain that to him. He's just panicking and he's like, oh, man, I'm, I'm a little baby truther and I just put these glasses on. Here, you need to wear these glasses too. You need to share the same perspective. This guy's like, you're crazy, right? That's how we come across whenever we just go nuts, give everyone all the information without building bridges. Um, but especially with that, without that love aspect. So this is what happens when you take the hard road. He's like, I'm giving you a choice. Either put on these glasses or start eating that trash can. That's, that's a no-brainer, right? Um, to the people who are ingrained in the system, they're going, to, they're going to choose to eat the trash can. They're not going to put on the glasses. They don't want to see things the way you see them. They already know. 
Mac attack. More paper? Thank you. I super appreciate it. I, I do. Thank you for the paper. So he says, look, after a huge fight scene, right? And this is what it is. It's a fight. It's a fight to get people to just put on these glasses, right? It's easier. There's other ways to get people to put on the glasses. You don't need to fight them, okay? But occasionally that will work. So he gets them to put on the glasses. He's like, look, they're everywhere. Look at them. Look at them. They're everywhere. These people are like, whoa, wait a minute. They can see us. <laughs> Start talking. You ain't the first son of a bitch to wake up out of their dream. We are literally dreaming. We're in a dream state. Our consciousness isn't working properly. We don't perceive things. We don't have independent thought collectively right now. We're asleep. There's a bunch of sleepwalkers out there. They might have their eyes open, but they don't have their eye open, okay? They don't have insight at all. They just want to talk about blue tortillas. All right. So these guys are all beat up. They're all tore up. They're like, man, what a battle for the truth. He's like, we can't be the only ones who can see. Well, that's the other thing. When when you put on the glasses, that's really all you want. You got to find your family, man. You got to find those who see with a similar perspective than you do or, or that you do. All right. So here's their buddy back from the homeless place. He was the guy who was in charge of the church. He's like, there's a meeting tonight. We'll be at this address at 11 o'clock. The world needs a wake up call. The world does need a wake-up call. So they go to this meeting. They actually put all of the chemicals and stuff into contact lenses so they didn't need the glasses anymore after that. So they put on their contact lenses. Uh, the truther guy comes back on the TV. Everyone's in there watching him during the meeting. And he's like, there's a signal being broadcast every second of every day through our television sets, even when the set is turned off. So some of you think about it. You might be one of those people who are like, oh man, I'll just turn off my TV when I'm not watching it. Therefore, I don't get all that signal stuff. Do you? Are you sure? <laughs> I would go the extra mile and unplug it if I was you. Just saying. He goes, oh good, oh good. The city's crawling with cops looking for us. Yes. So the cops start looking for people. They start, I mean, look at like Waco was a really good example, right? All these people trying to live off the land and stuff. And all of a sudden they're on the news and they're all deemed enemies of the state and stuff. And next thing you know, their place is on fire and they're on fire. And then they're saying that, oh, they, they did that to themselves. I don't know what you're talking about. Hmm? Somebody's throwing stuff. What? <clears throat> now, most of the cops are human, he says. They've been told that we're commies trying to bring down the government. They might as well say ISIS, like in this day and age, you know? Uh, so they lie. They lie. They don't talk about like, oh, these people are truthers. Oh, these people are trying to encourage alternative medicine. These people are trying to encourage um, alternative ways of living and happy, more prosperous ways of living. These people are promoting love and peace and stuff. No, they're going to call, they're going to make it sound like we are as dangerous as... They are, essentially. And some of them are being recruited. The creatures are trading wealth and power. Most of us just sell out right away. Then all of a sudden we get promoted. Our bank accounts get bigger. We start buying new houses and cars. It's perfect, isn't it? We'll do anything to be rich. Well, guess what? That hits home. That's mankind. Even for some people who like start off on a sort of truth-seeking path, you know, they're really close to putting on the glasses or whatever, and then all of a sudden some alien comes over and says, hey, listen, how about we put a million bucks into your account? Then all of a sudden, you're not thinking about the aliens anymore. You're not thinking about alternative reality and healthier ways of living. You're thinking about buying a yacht and going on vacation to an island somewhere. And you know what I mean? Like all of a sudden your dreams have come true, but you're still dreaming, aren't you? They are tuning, they are turning our atmosphere into their atmosphere. Now, this was a pretty interesting statement to make because I've seen this theme in various uh, movies and stuff about our atmosphere changing. And our atmosphere is changing. Now, is it to accommodate alien beings that are here already? I don't know. I assume that they're already used to the atmosphere or whatever. But I can tell you, our atmosphere will change, okay? And our atmosphere, because of the pressurization of the world and in the continual buildup of that pressure, is contributing to our deaths, our short lifespans, okay? If that pressure were to be relieved, 
it would contribute to a lengthier lifespan. So yes, they don't. They I I do believe that they're manipulating the atmosphere. <clears throat> Deplete the planet and move on to another. They want benign indifference, which means they don't want you to put up a fight. They want to land here, be in control, have a bunch of slaves, do whatever they want to, be fed, um, you know, figure out how to live longer and stuff, and then they want to leave because they don't want to stay here because their lifespan starts to shrink as well. They want us drugged. And they all wear these expensive watches. It turns out that they're really two-way radios. This guy says, we're getting too sloppy. Look, we're getting too sloppy. That's all there is to it. Now, this is us. This is Pretend we're in this group. This little truther group. We're all hanging out. He says their detection is becoming more effective. Ah, isn't that what I've been trying to tell you guys so many times? Everyone's like, oh, hey, hey, guys. Um... J Dreamers, you got to be careful. They're taking down channels left and right. This channel got taken down. That channel got taken down, etc. Well, their detection is becoming more effective. Listen to what he says. So we have to be more careful. Stay aware of keeping up appearances. Go to work. Punch your time clocks. Do, what's ex do what is expected of you. We've gotten reckless and the movement is suffering for it. Time to stop talking about it and trying to figure out what happened. Now we start spilling some blood, says this guy. Is this guy right? Time to just start spilling some blood. I, I, I want to talk about this because many of you who will watch this will resonate with this guy. This guy's a truther. He's looking into it too. He's got the glasses and contact lens. But he's not right. That's not going to be the way to win the war. He says, no, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's not working. We don't stand a chance with a few guns and grenades. It's not going to work. Might make you feel better in the short term, but it's not going to work. If anything, they'll just manipulate that and twist that, put that on the news, turn it into something else that will suit their own agenda. So what are we supposed to do? Good question. We seek out and locate their signal and we shut it off. Wake people up. Wake people up up. That's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to go around killing all the bad guys. All of the sleepwalkers, that's the problem. They're asleep. Killing bad guys is not going to wake them up. Not one bit. You go out and you kill the bad guys and all the sleepwalkers are going to be like, whoa, that, that guy's a communist. That guy's in a part of the ISIS, Middle Eastern, whatever. You know, that guy's a gang member. That guy's this and that, whatever. No, man. Killing bad guys, that's what the bad guys do. They kill what they think are the bad guys. That's their job. You can't fight fire with fire. Wake people up. What is the actual problem? Not that there are aliens among us. I don't care. That's not a problem. It's that they, because, because of the aliens, the people are asleep. The people being asleep is the issue, right? Wake people up. That's the solution. Focus on the solution. Don't focus on the problem. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, Dave here works at KRDA, and he claims that the signal may be coming from one place. Ooh, where's the signal coming from? Interesting. The only way that we can do that is from inside. So, all right. If you're approached by anyone to work for these creatures, by all means, accept. Right? Don't put up a fight. Don't struggle. Don't, don't fight the current or the flow or anything. No, 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 no. Jump right in there. This is what Neo found out. Remember when we were breaking down the Matrix? Neo eventually figured it all out. You don't need to fight the agents, right? All these people ran away from them. Neo thought he had to fight them. Morpheus thought he had to fight them. Turns out that wasn't the answer. The answer was to be like them. He put himself right into Agent Smith, and he worked his magic like his own little virus right through their system. Gain their trust. Make them believe that they can buy you off. Remember, there's way more of us than there are of them. And we hold all of the positions that are really the ones that are crucial to living. We are everywhere, just like in Fight Club. Remember? We are all over the place. We serve, we serve your food. We put gas in your car. We do this and that. We are the ones who are holding all the cards. But they, they try to separate us so that we don't come together. All of a sudden, a whole light, whitish, light blue color opens up in the floor and says, attention, your, your wristwatch has malfunctioned. So they jump through this hole 
because the cops are chasing them. And uh, this is really interesting. So now they're in a an underground base. And he goes, I think we're under the city, maybe some kind of underground base or something. Are underground bases real? Yes, they are. Okay, all over the place, deep underground military bases, regular bases, all kinds of private bases, personal um, tunnels and stuff. They have machines, huge machines that uh, drill miles and miles, making huge tunnels using uh, the rock that they carve out of the earth and remelting it in order to solidify a tunnel as it goes. They have technology beyond what most people can even comprehend. And they couldn't imagine that there's tunnel systems like ants underneath your feet in every major city. So this guy jumps on his PKE meter. I kid you not. This guy jumps on his PKE meter from the Ghostbusters. And uh, they're, they're using these PKE meters. <laughs> Remember how I said they used props from other movies in this movie? That's totally from the Ghostbusters, okay? And he's like, we've eliminated the terrorists. Well, they can't find the terrorists or the truthers, so they just say that they've been eliminated, right? They lie to themselves. All right, now here's the PKE meter, just in case you didn't believe me. There it is, there's his, boom, right there. Boom, there it is right there. That's the PKE meter, which is a real thing, by the way. Um, I don't think it was just used just because they were all poor. All these Hollywood people were just poor. So they had, they just had to reuse the props. No, there's something to the PKE meter. And there's a reason why they, they have, they show you these devices that can read your aura, read your energy, uh, be used to communicate, etc. So this guy says our, now they're basically, st they stumbled into this deep underground military base where they're having this gala, this ball. And the main leader is like, our projections show that by the year 2025, interesting, by the year 2025, not only America, but the entire planet will be under the protection and the dominion of this power alliance. Well, time out. There's no alliance, okay? Their power. They're still lying to the humans. Some of the humans are there at the gala and they're, they're there to help the aliens because they've been bought out. They've been sold out. They're all millionaires and stuff now. And that's all they care about is increasing their money. They're like, Oh yes. Hmm. Yes. More money for us. Good. Yay. Oh, humans. Did you get more paper? Isn't that nice? Yes. More paper for you. <sighs> yeah. Whatever. The underground terrorist network, uh, is gone. The situation is normal again. This is what the guy looks like in his alien version. That's what he looks like in his human version. And this year alone, your increased profits are up by 39%. Now this guy, the human, bumps into Rowdy Roddy Piper and his friend Frank. He's totally in a tuxedo. He's got a clean shave. His hair is all combed and stuff. He says, come on, come on. I'll show you around. Hey, guys. Hey, what's going on? You guys are rich too, right? Uh, hey, I'm glad you're all here. We're all, I'm glad we're all together helping these aliens do their jobs. You know, I knew that me and you had a lot in common the first time we met. We've met this dude before? Oh, that's right. He's the Jack something that was um, being so crude every time that the truther came on TV and was giving people the truth, trying to wake them up. He's like, oh, that, just that idiot licking his nuts again. And then all of a sudden throw some money his way and... Look at him. Cleans up nice. He's super happy. Life's great. He got what he wants. Now he can go buy his extra long press on nails and go jogging That's every day if he wants to. Look how happy he is. So this guy who thinks that they're all buddies because they're all happen to be in the same place starts showing him around. He's like, take a look at this. And then you hear someone get on the monitor and they're like, flight alpha seven to Andromeda is now ready for boarding. Now, remember they're under ground. But look, all carry-on luggage must be held securely. You look straight ahead and you see space. How is this possible that you could be underground and see space? Hmm. Well, if let's just assume that every single thing in this movie is totally real. Let's just, just pretend, right? Just for funsies. Everything in this movie is totally real. There are stories about people who have gone 
to the edge of the earth, to the extremities of the earth, and even inside of the earth, and they have been able to look beyond the veil, the sky, the covering, and see space or the heavens. There are real actual stories about that. I'll leave it up to you to find them. I don't I don't have them off the top of my head right now, but they've come up a few times in my research. So they're underground. Um, they have some sort of this like travel system where they get beamed by this bluish white beam thing. And all of a sudden they go, they shoot off to another world. Another guy shoots off to another world. He goes, yeah, I don't know how it works exactly, uh, but it's got it's got to do with some sort of gravitational lens deal. Hey, Val! More paper? God, I got paper to go around. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, so check this out. Um, gravitational lens deal. Well, I've always talked about how the sky acts as and is a lens, right? A lens that focuses light, giving us daytime and the sun and the point of focus above us, etc., right? Some sort of gravitational lens deal. Well, gravitation, gravity, as we know it, uh, follows the world, and the world includes the sky. So, I'll leave that up to you. Anyways, you gotta check out my other videos on it. <clears throat> we gotta hurry up through this because I'm losing my voice. So here we got the brains of the operation. Check this out, boys. So they walk into this area. This is like their master signal goes out from here, um, from a satellite dish. We pump it out all over the world. A technique called multi... Okay, now this is actually the news people. See these anchors right here? This is what they're saying. These words are what they're saying right now. A technique called multispectral analysis. Okay, multi spect analysis is to is to observe, to see, right? To, to to analyze, to see something and to understand it better. Multispectral means um, different light, different kinds of light. Multispectral to uh, multi multi vision, okay? Different ways of seeing. This will allow space sensors to penetrate natural barriers. Really. Imagine that space sensors. I, I I don't believe in space, as I've said many times. Um, I do believe that there's stuff outside of our sky, but it's full and bright and beautiful. It's the heavens. Um, but the space is still inside of our world, essentially. Just go up super high, it gets really dark, it's become space. <clears throat> but you're still inside the confines of the pressurized system that we live in. Now, Space sensors are sensors that are up there in the sky somewhere within our world that penetrate natural barriers. Natural barrier, like your skull. Think about it. Uh, this guy's like, uh, hey, can we go inside? Can we go inside? He's like, do you have your authorization cards? Uh, sounds like something familiar these days, right? Uh, there ain't no countries anymore, guys. There's no more good guys. They're running the whole show. They own everything. The whole goddamn planet. They can do whatever they want to. Ah, uh, but why? Because we let them. We have our power. We control ourselves. We are self-governed. We control our own minds until we don't. And the only way we don't is we give that away to somebody else. We give it away. So this guy doesn't see it that way. He just says, oh, well, we've already done it. There's no way we could take it back. There's no way we could stand up for ourselves. Pfft. He's still under a delusion. And he's trying to convince the other guys that have the glasses. So they put on the glasses. You can see everyone that's in the station. And they're like, whoa, you know, there's, there's the reptilian people, whatever they are. <clears throat> they're working at the news station on TV. They're like, blast them, right? Now, listen to what the woman on the PA system says. Security alert. Intruders appear headed for the roof. Why are they headed for the roof? On the microcosmic scale, okay, if this whole movie represents reality in our world, these guys are headed for, uh, excuse me, these guys are headed for the roof. What's the roof of our world? Hmm. Well, they're headed for the roof because they need to destroy a signal that is being broadcast from the roof. Hmm. Interesting. Now the reptilian chick. Okay. Yeah. Totally already knew. I could, I just looked into her eyes and I'm like, no, nah, she's a bad guy. I already know. 
So she totally kills Frank, right? Takes him, takes him by surprise. This guy gets to the roof. You see all these little satellite dishes? Bing, 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 bing. There's a huge one right there. They've got these huge satellite dishes on the roof that they're using to broadcast this mind control signal. That reminds me of something in real life that we actually have here in our world, way up north, close to the top of the world, so to speak, the roof of the world, it's called HARP. <laughs> and they have satellite dishes. I don't know. They're not dishes. They're some sort of satellite type deals, um, receptors, whatever they are. And there's a news article that says HARP's new owner holds an open house to prove that the facility is not capable of mind control. Wow, isn't that suspect? Oh, don't you think? Right? Who, like, bro, really? So he holds this open... Well, come on and look. Look, I, I cleaned up real nice. Look, there's no mind control going on up here. It's just a... Uh, Auroral research programs and whatnot. We're not bouncing signals off of the dome of the world to go back down to the rest of the world. No, none of that's happening. Come up here and visit, right? All you regular slaves that can't, they can't even leave your own cities. Come up here to, um, you know, out in the middle of nowhere and inspect our facility that we've cleaned up. No, 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 no. Something's going on. Stop. So he looks back. He's like, wait a minute. She's all, don't do it. Look at these eyes, man. Look at just, just look. Something doesn't look right. I don't know, man. Something doesn't look right. Just, I, there's just something there. It's not like she has like slit eyeballs or anything, but something like just, and I don't mean anything against like the actress or anything. I'm just saying like something's off. Something is off right there. And sometimes it's just a feeling. Sometimes it's just a feeling that you get, man. You got to go with your gut sometimes. So he shoots her before she can shoot him. He blows up the satellite dish. Boom. This blue, this laser beam thing shoots out of it. <coughs> Excuse me. We're almost done. All right. So, Rowdy Roddy Piper, he's he's on his deathbed because he's been shot by the helicopter or whatever, gives the finger up to the guys on the, on the helicopter because he did his job. He shut off the signal. So, everyone is watching TV. They go from watching regular old, you know, whatever they're watching, whatever you guys watch. I forgot all the names of famous people, but they're watching their regular programs, their programming. The Oscar winners give a press conference to what, 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 what's wrong? What, what is it? What is it? This guy's over here. It says no independent thought. He's telling people what to think. All the sex and violence on the screen has gone too far for me, says the acid face alien. I'm fed up with it. And now, now this guy, it's, you, you notice how it's no longer in black and white? Because they can see them with their regular eyes now, right? Something has changed. The signal has been shut off. They don't need the special glasses any longer. They are full color now. Now the guy on TV goes on and says, Filmmakers like George Romero and John Carpenter have to show some restraint. Interesting. John Carpenter is the one that wrote the movie. All right, so this guy on TV is like, what? what's going on? This guy or creature is literally having sex with this human chick. And he's like, well, what's wrong, baby? Huh? Right? Because now she can see him and she's just clearly disgusted by who she's with. Um, and that's pretty much how that ends. Now, after the credits, this is super interesting. <laughs> after the credits, it makes it makes it clear to us the characters and events depicted in this photo play photo play dude this is what is this the 20s stop why are you saying photo play the characters and events depicted in this photo play are fictitious period put on your glasses and let's read this again the characters and events oh hey thanks miss daldi thank you for the paper Lots of paper. I appreciate it. Thank you for the paper. 
Um, the characters and events depicted in this photo play are fictitious, and any similarity to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Okay, this other one goes on to say... This motion picture is protected under laws of the United States and other countries. Unauthorized duplication, distribution, or exhibition may result in civil liability and criminal prosecution. But you know what I see? Obey. 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 <laughs> and that is the movie They Live. Classic. Actually, Rowdy Roddy Piper tweeted about the movie. I believe he passed away recently. I'm not sure. Um, but before he allegedly passed away, he said they live as a documentary. So I tweeted, damn right. Well, that is our breakdown of the movie They Live. Uh, I hope that you all had a good time. I hope that you had more than a good time. I hope that something resonated with you, as it did for me. I literally spent like six hours maybe more, watching this movie, breaking it down, and um, getting it all ready for all of you. So I hope you had a good time. More importantly, I hope you learned something. And I hope that um, all of you are able to change your perspectives so that we can see the world a little bit different. Uh, make sure to leave some comments. Let me know what you thought of it. What are your ideas and stuff? And until next time, I'm Jay Dreamer saying good vibes and goodbye.
Press! Oh. Oh.